Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode. This is the month mark for the Middle Age Mutant Show, season one. I hope you guys are excited, as excited as I am. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and introduce my co host. First is a man whose parents hated one letter of the alphabet so much that they proclaimed there would be no H in his name. No H. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I've been keeping up with the news. I've just been reading so many articles about foreign affairs, and oh. I really wish, I really hope I can discuss them at length. You're just, you're just trying to make me angry at this point. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna mute you for a second. Uh, my next co-host is uh, is a man who is single-handedly the reason why the DC Universe online servers are still running to this day. Bods, how's it going? It's good, and uh, DC servers, you're welcome. <laughs> um, you're you're welcome for all that money I pumped into uh, a game yeah. <laughs> and digital cosmetics. And uh, do you go on there? You know, and is so, there like nobody on there now? Is that is that how it no, is? No, it's it's still like it's fine. Like they're still playing. It amazes me because what's you you wanted me to start playing that game? With you what eleven years ago? Twelve? Yes, years ago? Uh, it's pretty long time ago. And, and I, I, I was so on, disappointed so. when I jump on. I was like, oh, this game kind of sucks. And you're like, I like this game. <laughs> And I swear, the you only know what? reason you really liked it is because the character customization. Yeah, it, it is. A, it's just like I can make anything in there. Like, literally, we should just go a day and just show you all the characters. We do a little. I don't even know if you have an account anymore. We could do a little playthrough. I'm pretty sure like I that. do. I just need to go in there and check it out. I, what I need to do I, is I go on Steam and, and actually start a, a, a character there because it'll look way better. And maybe we can yeah, do that but it's as just a like, uh, Snarkade thing. We, ha- we got to do a Snarkade yeah. Yeah, because that's something we could all we could all play and stuff. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, in my so, mind, I could turn that game into anything. So, I, yeah, your imagination <laughs> it really trumps mine because I can I, I play that game and I'm like, oh, screw this. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first of all, uh, let's get uh, let's talk about the first thing. Uh, no H. Given the um, tensions between China and Taiwan, uh, do you think that there's that we're likely to see? an escalation in uh, maybe a, an even an invasion of Taiwan by China? Well, you know what? I've been pulling for an invasion for quite some time. No, 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 no. We have talked about this so many times. We don't talk about these things. We talk about comics, movies, and video games, and nothing else. I'm oh, going to talk yeah. to you after the stream. I swear to God, I forget to every time, but we're going to talk today. All right, oh. so let's talk. Let's do a brief uh, overview of what we're going over today. In gaming news, we're going over the Super Mario Brothers movie's final release trailer. Gameplay trailer news, we're going over Robocop Rogue City. Ooh, yeah. We're also going to be talking about some uh, some gaming media's shitty opinion about uh, about Marvel's Wolverine's iconic yellow suit. Uh, In gaming news, we will also be going over the uh, uh, Massive Entertainment's, Ubisoft developed Massive Entertainment's open world Star Wars game that's coming out. We don't know what it's called. It's coming out. There will be a live stream uh, announcement as well. Uh, in CW news, we'll be talking about Jensen Eccles and Batman. Uh, in comic book VOD news, we'll be talking about John Bernthal's re- reprisal of the Punisher in the Daredevil Born Again series. In comic book cartoon news, we'll be talking about Batman the Cape Crusader. We'll also be talking about Max Fleischman's Superman. Uh, in Celebi Comics, which is it's not going to be a regular thing on this channel, but there's more Celebi Comics bo- uh, bods. So we'll be talking cool. about two of those today. Uh, and for new comics, we'll be talking about Batman and Joker's deadly duos. And uh, this is a section that will become kind of a regular series, but sporadic in nature is going to be uh, back issues, which we'll be talking about Punisher Warzone one through six written by my favorite person in the world, Chuck Dixon. All right, let's go and move on to the first topic. All right. Gaming movie news, Super Mario Brothers final release trailer i'm sorry that i'm bringing this back up but this is going to be kind of a big deal to everybody i i think this movie is going to cross a billion dollars and usually this the the trailers for super mario brothers does not get copyright bought so let's go ahead and just look at that trailer <laughs> once let's switch over to the feed i'm probably going to talk over this a bit but i think it's still looking pretty good this part was actually kind of funny Fresh meat for the grinder. Mm-hmm. Pay him no heed. He is cute, but he is. There's gotta be even uh, the voice of Cyborg from uh, Teen Titans. Yeah, that's right. Sweet relief from death. Sweet relief from death. <laughs> that's the kid when I go see. Kids love that. Yeah. Kids love that. Goombas. Goombas. 
Whatever those things are. Oh, <laughs> I think they started with an A. Their name of them. I can't remember what it was. It's like a kid knows or something. Bowser is coming. I'm not afraid. I'll do anything for my brother. We're going to save him. I hate that woman's voice. It creates yes. almost something fierce. Who, who is the voice? It's that chick with the big eyes that's in everything now. She's the it girl. Uh, let me look her up. Woman. Look her up. Right. Hold on a second. I'll tell you right quick. I mean, I'm so I'm so jazzed for this. It's gonna be like my Mad Max part of the movie. Yeah. I love Mario Kart. The lady's name is Ann Taylor Joy. Right. That's right. Yeah. Um, huh. the same casting principles behind Chris Pratt, it's a, yeah. it girl. It's, it's a draw. She wasn't put on this earth to play Princess Peach or anything, but you know, no. this wasn't, well, so, this was never meant to be the definitive version of Mario anyway. So, um, but I haven't seen that trailer actually. You know, the, the, uh, was it the hot, hot Bob Hoskins was the definitive version. <laughs> and John, uh, Lowe, John, Lowe is still John like was all, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'm still excited for this movie. I, I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. Um, I, I just wanted to show it off and and uh, just say hey, it's, it's looking well. Great. I, I I agree. It looks it looks really good. Um, I don't know how people are still feeling about Chris Pratt's voice, but like I'm not even thinking about it at this point. Yeah, there's um, there's some people that are still pissed off. I mean, I'm not pissed off about his voice. I'm I'm just mad that I think Sebastian Maniscalco would still be a better Mario. I mean, but I would want him to be like kind of like a cursy Mario. <laughs> which, which Elimination and, and uh, Nintendo wouldn't go for that. But I got to say, yeah. uh, and, and uh, Anya, her name was Anya Taylor Joy. Her. Oh, oh no. Oh, vo- I know. Who, yes. I know her who. vocal fry makes that like wobbly kind of scratchy on the verge of tears voice. I hate it. It, it makes me want to like, like rip my hair out. I, I hear people talk like that all the time. That's that new affectation from California. And I just can't stand it. But you she's know, like, she's like from I don't know. Sweden yes, but or something, you got to right? remember that stuff starts in like like the Kardashians are the reason that thing is so big because they talk like this. And so <laughs> what happens is is like every woman in the freaking world picks up on this and they all start to sound like this. And I cannot stand <laughs> oh, it. It bothers me. I so guess bad. that's how she knows English. Probably had to yeah, keep up with the Kardashians. She's like, probably oh. listening to the Kardashians. She's like, oh, so that's this how you is talk English talk. She kept up with the Kardashians, that's for sure. <laughs> um, the for sure. whoever voiced Princess Peach, the main princess woman character, she uh, I was like, when I saw that they were making a movie about Super Mario, I'm like, she's going to be the annoying one, no matter who voices her, because her whole deal forever now, or at least the main thing, if you know anything about Mario, you know that Mario has to go rescue Princess Peach. And I'm like, yeah needing to be rescued will not fly and that will make her insufferable yeah with the whole i can do anything by myself i'm like that's all fine and good but man i'm just fully expecting every other line to be about how she doesn't need a man or something it's like yeah that's she's great. gonna be like I'm the like- princess bubblegum of this show i don't know if you've ever watched adventure time that's how princess bubblegum is on that show she's insufferable yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be like, we get it, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just, why do you have to beat us over the head with it? We already get yeah. it, we know. Yeah. So, it's we fun. were never disagreeing with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I should bring this up, just so that, that you're aware of it. Right? And this is a dad bods moment. Who is your daddy, and what does he do? There you go. All right, well, so anyways, it's spring break, so... Uh, my kids are here. Luckily, my my son's old enough to just sleep through the day. But my daughter's <laughs> here listening in here in the studio, so uh-huh. she can she can hear everything. She's not allowed to talk, and she lost her voice anyway, so that works good. That works out really <laughs> so, good. She sounds like she has a little bit of vocal fry herself. Yeah, yeah. If you start but, to uh, notice that as she goes on, you might want to like get her some primatine mist or something, and just kind of knock yeah, that crap to, out right away. Doctor but Chuck. yeah, so I can tell you right now that I'm probably have to go to the theaters to see this, right? Yeah, she nodded. Yeah. So yeah, okay. if they're if they're marketing to to, to eight year old girls, uh, then yes, they've they've done a good job. Well, I think Mario appeals to everybody. I mean, you, it really does. Like, I mean, so, 
That's it, for us. But I mean, too. here's the thing: it appealed to everybody before it got this weird uh, Anya Taylor Green character as playing Peach. Mm-hmm. It's, it's every, yeah. Peach did not have a voice except for oh yeah uh, like that. So you can't tell me that when it was just you know regular Mario, it didn't appeal. Now it's like oh, we have yeah. to have woke Mario, and so that's that's what I'm hoping I don't see too much of in this movie is that they go well. This is just for like everybody. We're not gonna dwell on these things. That's at least what I hope. It, it's a it's a weird thing because we we live in a time where like we're just seeing a bunch of stuff come back from like the past, like 80s stuff just being revisited and revisited. And the reason is we have like Mario, now. like, well, we have money. Yeah, they, they want they want the uh, adults who grew up, you know, watching the uh, and their kids like are like robot it now. You do. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I will stop talking. No, no, you're just starting to sound like a robot. I don't know why. I just want to let you know you might want to get closer to your router again. Um. I just think that we have money and that's what they're doing right now. And so the kids are along for the popcorn. ride, but yeah, you pay for extra seat and popcorn and all that. And all exactly. This. Exactly. And, and it's an, IP. they don't ahead. have to, explain, it's an IP. They don't have to explain to you what it is. You already know you're already sold. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, speaking of IPs that we already know about and we're already <laughs> sold on at least our generation. Uh, the next topic for today is RoboCop rogue city. And I'm, Kind of excited about this game, kind of not, because Nacon is going to be the publisher. I don't know anything about Taeyeon, but Nacon has been known for shenanigans. But hopefully that uh, hopefully these guys will be able to go ahead and kind of bypass that. I'll give it one second while I bring that up. Well, here's another good example of, a, of an IP from the 80s that, that appeals to everyone. Obviously, we like it. Uh, my year, eight-year-old daughter is really looking forward to Robo. You're not? No? Oh, okay, well, never, never mind. Never mind. I, I guess it's just, it's just for us. Then, yeah, this, this is, is just for, for us. The, okay. It's for the boys. This is, again, Robo, Robocop Rogue City, the official gameplay overview trailer developed by Taycon. Uh, sorry, Taeyon, and um, it is uh, published by Nacon, which is kind of bad, but let's go ahead and look at it. Now this this part gave me the chills. I love him getting out of the car. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. He looks great too. His like mouth looks, he looks awesome. like. Yeah. I like that they're doing this. I love that. It'd be easier to burn it all to the ground. Believe me. Just <laughs> this gives me feels of like RoboCop two though, right here. This scene. Mm-hmm. I love you can hear him walking. Yeah. Come back with a warrant, cop. <laughs> this is, again, does. Robocop 2. <laughs> I have a warrant. Why is this girl talking and peeing? Oh, it's that girl. I will take care of that. Open the door. Does Peter Weller do the voice? Yeah, Peter Weller does the voice. I was going to ask, because I'm like, this would be perfect for me. Yeah. He doesn't actually have to be his being in the booth. Or just talking to his phone like that. So I'm just like you know, in a lot of ways. Yeah. <laughs> I wondered how they were gonna do this because you notice he's not looking down the iron sights. He's basically like targeting, but I don't know how much he's you're actually targeting. You know? Yeah. That that would be like auto aim. It's great crisis. Okay. But you know, auto aim would work because it would be in universe. Yeah. Yeah. It's Dude, watch this him. guy. He, his arm is blown off. He's like, oh my god. The guy in the foreground. You barely see it, but his arm is blown off. I love the nuke sign. Yeah. yeah. I love how he explodes. That's fine. Awesome. You need it to be the bloodiest thing ever. Okay, Jocelyn, maybe you shouldn't have watched that. <laughs> She'll be fine. We were younger than her when we watched this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if she watched Stranger Things, she's probably fine. Yeah, she (laughs) loves Stranger Things. So, okay, yeah, that is... So, yeah, excited. Yeah. Tempered excitement, because I think that... I think this game will be good if it adheres enough to the in-universe stuff, because if it gets all colored, you know, he was using an Uzi there for uh, for a bit. And I was like, yeah, like he picked up another gun, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. I don't mind. But uh, if he if it's like everything is that, I'm, uh, you know, and the thing is, I, like, you can't walk around with just your pistol the whole time. What they're going to have to do is get really creative. I, I kind of noticed in that trailer that he was having to do a little bit of uh, investigation, which. We never got to really see that part of RoboCop because a lot of his stuff was him finding stuff out by either going and and using the databases to figure that stuff out. Or, you know, in the first movie, it was all about solving his own murder. 
And in the second movie, it was really action based him getting called on to stuff. And which I think it's going to happen as well. where you are going to get called to a scene to actually, yeah. you know, take care of it. And sometimes I'm, I'm hoping that sometimes it's going to be maybe just a straight up action, like cocaine scene, you know, uh, mm-hmm. I know yeah, they yeah. don't like to do that anymore because that's why I, I kind of figure that in part two, they didn't want to actually go like, well, there's cocaine in this universe. They wanted to go, oh, what nuke? That's a new drug. That's our own thing. So it looks less, you know. Actually, you know, there's actually going to be a spinoff movie, Nuke Bear, starting the nuke. <laughs> <laughs> this only that. Robocop can stop him. <laughs> yes. uh, but I, I hear Robert you Bear. <laughs> Drop it, bear. Dead or alive, that bear awesome. is coming to me. But I hear what you're saying, and I'm, of course, not a gamer. But um, Yeah, plus this is first course, person. You, you said that kind of makes you a little bit. I see the like, first thing immediately. I'm like, first person, I'm out. Put a bucket by me. I'm the person you would throw up on. <laughs> but, uh, and I, so I hear you saying, like, I'm like, hey, cool, it's RoboCop. You have Peter Weller. It looks like you're walking around in the movie, more or less, to an extent. But I'm also like, it's going to come down to gameplay. If yeah. the gameplay is not great, you have the novelty of a RoboCop video game, but I don't know how long you're playing that. But then again, this is coming from a non-gamer. So uh, I'll know a game is really good uh, once you know, H is all like, you know what? I'm going to stop not playing video games and get back in the in the fold and just start playing them again. That's I, what I, I know. What, what video game really will do good. that for him? What's what's going to be I the know, franchise maybe, that brings you I, back? Maybe we'll find something on this. I will, tell you, I will tell you, there's already games that, there's many games that, the, uh, from what I played of the Uncharted games, I really like those. I just, I don't have the patience for games in general, but um, uh, Uncharted was fun because you did a lot of um, the camera sort of, you had fixed camera angles for a lot of things. And mm-hmm. uh, the gunplay was annoying to me. So I was, I was, I was kind of bad at it. The first so, one's a bit, a bit uh, janky on the gunplay. Not bad because like I've, I've, I've enjoyed that one probably more than most. The first two yeah. I enjoyed the most. The third one was horrible <laughs> i i have no good memories of that one i was very yeah. sick at the time when that came out i had vertigo and <laughs> oh, wow. I, to this day i've only played it once and i, I refuse to go back to it because it was just so terrible yeah, you're and playing then, vertigo with your experience playing vertigo having vertigo playing that game was pretty much any first person shooter <laughs> for you yeah yeah oh man um the god of war games i remember liking those those are fun yeah uh, the fixed camera angle again you probably liked mgs as well yeah, I had that I'm back in the day. I remember when I first got like my PS2, that was like the game I wanted to play, Sons of Liberty. Mm-hmm. And I never beat it, but well, if you got to the if you got to the spot where you switched to riding, you probably wanted to quit anyways, as most when people. When I was did. not all the not snake parts, I'm like, this is cool, but I'm not snake. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh yeah, I, I'm sure you'd probably also like Diablo because that's a that's an isometric perspective game. Never Anything played it. action RPG Perfect. like that. Um, yeah, well, this is kind of topical. When Resident Evil 4 first came out, I remember playing that, which wasn't exactly the same as like fixed camera. You would follow Leon around, but uh, mm-hmm. it was more like third person, which was which was doable at the time. But um, well, famously, the reason why um, MGS uh, was isometric as it was, was because uh, Kojima kojima san he uh he had uh motion sickness and he said well i could have made it full 3d but it made me sick to look at that so i said we're gonna have the top down camera angle with the soliton radar so that's how we're gonna play it i just became a bigger fan of that of that game <laughs> there, there are dozens of us <laughs> there are dozens of <laughs> No, actually, there's probably pretty much whole nations. To be honest, uh, I, I think I read uh, a couple of years ago that it's the Scandinavians and the Japanese that have the hardest time with motion sickness. I just found out, screw 23 and me, I just found out in middle age mutants, I'm Scandinavian and Japanese. <laughs> you heard it here first. You're, a, you're the worst cocktail of them, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> None of their strengths, all of their weaknesses. And, uh, <laughs> well, now I can start making all those jokes I've always wanted to make. So look out, Scandinavians. I'm coming <laughs> <Yeah>. for <laughs> You can make all the jokes about the Swedish chef and get in no trouble for them. <laughs> no trouble. Just See, I'm, time. I'm married to a Swede. She's also Norwegian, all that. I can make fun of the Swedish, Swedish chef all I want. So, <laughs> but she can play the games though, right? She can't. Her brother can't. Her brother gets like hyper sick. He um used to play Halo with me and uh, Call of Duty, and he would say after I was done, man, it, I had to sit next to the toilet and kind of dry for a bit because it just made me so sick. Yeah. So yeah, it is true. They do have motion sickness. Uh, so 
Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. No H. So, it, so there's because... another one, No H, and my wife too. She, about bots. Can't. Just, just my wife. I'm good. Okay. So <laughs> there's, there's more of you out there. So, that's good. I feel it. Aff- it affects hundreds, hundreds. There is a community of us. We're going to start a support group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish I could play go. video game support group. Yeah. yeah. I wish I could play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like anonymous. All right. So let's move on to the next topic. Okay. So let's talk about game rant. Okay. I'm going to bring up this article browser. There we go. So this idiot over at game rant, William Arthur Car- Arthur Carter. He said that they should steer clear of the iconic yellow suit of uh, of Wolverine. We're going to show a nice little picture of it. I forgot to show that. And I've got to show that. And there, here it is. He thinks that we should steer clear of the yellow suit because of it would it would do damage to the tone of the game because he has a really crappy opinion. I uh, heavily disagree with this. Um, I honestly think that they shouldn't even go for the yellow suit. Uh, I think they should skip to the to the brown and yellow suit. Yeah, and because that's, that's my, my favorite. favorite. That's my favorite iteration of the suit. Honestly, yeah. uh, that's what makes these these particular games by Insomniac so fun. Is that you can go in there and basically unlock every suit that's ever existed for the character. Like, remember whenever I was playing Spider Man? Yeah, I was showing you guys back and forth, back and forth. How many suits I unlocked? I unlocked all the suits, and you're like, "Oh, that looks cool. That looks great." That's, there's tons of them. Yeah. So if you're not gonna do that, I, what I want to tell this guy is like, "Okay, maybe this game isn't for you. Maybe these type of games are not yeah. for you. You might not like them. If 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 the of a costume ruins the tone of something for you, you might not like a superhero like game because Arkham Knight did it. Arkham yep. Asylum. No, Ar- did Arkham Asylum? Yeah, did Arkham yes. Asylum do it, or was yeah, it started yeah, at had- Arkham City? No, uh, this would be a question for my son because he plays those over and over again. But I'm fairly sure you get different suits. I'm pretty suits sure they did it in, in City, and I'm pretty sure they did it. In, and I know for a fact they did it in Arkham Knight. Well, I know by Arkham Knight, you're like, you're playing literally everything. Everything, any goofy costume in there. He's like the, the Batman of, you know, Zurin R and um, mm-hmm. you, 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 classic looks, uh, first appearance, uh, Adam West. So you're you're playing all the campy, you know, goofy looking ones. And that didn't change the tone of the game for anybody. If you don't want to play that skin, don't. Yeah, you don't do that skin. Yeah. It's, just, it's, this is like such a nothing of an opinion. I'm like, really? Does it ruin you when you go to like the buffet and there's just too many foods? It ruins the ambiance of your meal. <laughs> I'm just like, what the hell? This is, this is, this is comic books, dude. And plus two, it's, it goes back to something we say all the time. Hey, maybe if this kind of stuff bothers you, like Batman suit being the classic, like, blue and gray and yellow or yeah. wolverines blue gray and black and yellow maybe if that bothers you maybe you don't like comic books exactly. maybe you yeah. don't yeah. like this medium and maybe you should shut up about it because your opinion sucks yeah i All i think they, this is the same reason we get the 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 wolverine suit like where here let's go back to the browser here you get this abomination. i still don't like that suit on the right to this day the leather it's too baggy i just don't like it but it's go ahead no h i'm sorry to interrupt you no it's fine i i just um yeah it's it's again i'm like this article all i get from this i'm like this is just i mean it's on the one hand if it's just purely just to get a reaction a rise out of nerds well congratulations we're talking about it so i guess but i think it's more than that i think these people have influence over what the the end user gets you know the end product user gets and i think a lot of things are compromised because People who don't like comic books are in charge of comic book things. Exactly. Uh, And also this, I don't want to go to a too much of a different subject because this is not directly related, but I find that whenever there is like criticism of something, there's a lot of fan shaming going on. And I see this as it is kind of indirectly related, but I see this as sort of like a degree of that where I mentioned this before, how the original X-Men movie in 2000, Cyclops snarkily says, what do you want, yellow spandex? I'm like, oh, yes, because the thing we're <laughs> liking is what we want to see. And if you say that, that tells me that I'm a dum-dum for liking this thing. I'm like, I'm like, yes, I want to see this stupid suit. And for a video game, it's just ridiculous to even bring it up because you have skins. The tone of the game, what are you talking about? I'm trying to even understand and comprehend this guy's problem. Mm-hmm. with this maybe because i'm a non-gamer or something i don't know but i'm like what's the problem who cares you yeah know? it's so stupid i mean if like let's say let's say they made it his default his default suit that you play throughout the game uh it's in canon it's in universe 
I mean, I still don't understand your bitching. Like, again, why are you playing this game? More than likely, Wolverine, I I'm just going to guess, is going to be just kind of like the, since this is the first one, you're probably going to see him in, in a multitude of costumes. He'll probably, since this will probably act like more of like an origin, uh, you'll see him in his original Madripoor suit, or you'll see him as Patch, or you'll see him as, you know, something like that. Or he'll be in this flannel in a, in a, in a cowboy hat. Does it flip and matter really? Yeah. In the end, if it's a, how about let's nope. talk about? Hey, if this game sucks, that's what matters. <laughs> Not that it like doesn't strike the right tone. You know, yeah. it. Well, did I, did any of that watch. stuff affect the comic book? The tone of the comic book? No, people love Wolverine. And no, people love they love this suit. They love the yellow suit. They love. I would probably contest that pe more people love the brown and yellow suit like me, but uh, that could be just my age. But uh, yeah. I think that's yeah. just that was that was when we were kids. That was when he. Yeah, that's what we, you know, like, before what we grew the, up with. Yeah, primary, yeah, because yeah. his blue suit didn't come back until really kind of when they start X Men started getting big, like you know, with animated series. Yeah, I can't. I honestly Jim can't Lee's. remember. Uh, whenever the Jim Lee nineties uh, book came out, um, X Men X Men number one was he wearing the yellow or was he wearing not, the, not to begin with? Like, because I'm pretty I sure on the cover he was of wearing it, the yellow was, and brown. Yeah, I, yellow and brown. Yellow and brown I, on the cover. I'm so, fairly sure. I experienced like a Mandela effect of remembering the. I know. Uh, I'm, yeah, I mean, you, Ty, you might have to look that up real quick, but uh, oh, I'm barely sure the cover. He's still wearing brown, but fast into the series, he's starting to wear the the other, you know, his tiger stripe, as they call it. Oh, it's called that's what they call it. Okay, I didn't know the yellow, the yellow and blue is called. I don't tiger know. Stripe. I prefer again. I prefer the brown, and it's just like I said, it's what. No, that's I just know. when we were kids. That's what we we knew. You know. When, yeah, when you it, saw the, the, the yellow and blue, that was like, oh, that's his old costume. Yeah, hold on. Sorry, still looking. If I could type correctly, number one. Uh, by Jim Lee, there it is, right there. Biggity bam. Open in a new tab. Hey, what can brown do for you? <laughs> See? So, yep. yeah. We're, we're, we're remembering it right, but I, I, I swear, pretty fast into the series, he starts wearing the blue again. And I know there was a big, like, you know, uh, acknowledgement of it. People said something, well, oh, you're going back to that. You know why I like this suit better is I wasn't a big fan of the the cuffs on the shoulder. I, I never did oh, I really see. care for that. Um, I really liked this where it was like kind of the scalloped towards the yeah. bottom of the deltoid back up towards the and it just gave him like a, a silhouette that looked really nice. I just um again I liked this suit better than and the I guess other you're one. kind of happy like in the comics now his suit is similar to that same uh, color scheme more 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 modern look but same. I've seen same the color. new one. I've seen a couple of the new ones. I'm not really uh. <laughs> I'm not really reading the current Wolverine uh, saga. Yeah. I'm I'm I've go, I'm going all the way back to Badger Poor Boys. Uh, <laughs> I um I went ahead and like I said I, I I think I told you guys already. I have volume uh, omnibus omnibus volume two and three fours coming out soon. I'm waiting for a reprint of one and then I'm just gonna binge the entire. So cause... you're doing you're doing the mini series, right? The the four issue mini series or like the issue one of the Wolverine ongoing series? It would be the what year was it? It was when Chris Claremont and all them were still doing yeah, it. So. Yeah, eighty something. Like yeah, early eighties. I'm going all the way back because the the volume one apparently starts with Weapon X. And then it moves on to the the Madripoor years, and then it moves on to Japan. Oh, and then blah blah blah. Is it like uh, is it like in chronological order? Like yes. for him. Oh, yes. neat. That's very so cool. So I only have two and three fours coming out soon, but like I said, I'm waiting for a reprint of one because I can't, in good conscious uh, uh, conscience, bring uh, buy <laughs> off of eBay because they want like 150 bucks, and I think I could have gotten it when it was 80 when it came out. Um, it's just too much money. Some people want two hundred and something dollars for that thing. I'm like, no. Wow. No. Which I think yeah. is funny that now the omnis. Remember when we were kids and you would get like a uh, trade paperback and you'd be, oh, a trade paperback. I was always told that no, those never go up in value because they're constantly yeah, printing yeah. them. Well, now yeah. the the prints on these are so low uh, that they they actually are worth something these days. These omnis. Do you, do you remember when we were kids and I had all the individual Marvel Comics Presents yeah. uh, Weapon X stuff? I was and, you always know, well, I've amazed got, that you scattered on your floor. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know why. I, I mean, they're they're fine, but I was like, I really should have taken better care of them. But but I read them over and over and over again. But you 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 had the 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 trade paperback, and you're like, oh, this is worth more now. And I was like, what? Oh, the Weapon X hardback. Yeah. Well, that was a yeah. special edition. Yeah, I got that. And now there's even and I'm another, like over here with like the a, real comics. Yeah. There's even like a newer <laughs> one that's worth more, I think, than mine because it was a lower print run and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, yeah. they didn't. That, I think it was not because you got to remember at that time in the 80s and the 90s, that was 
that had large print runs a lot of those things yeah so it was a big you, deal yeah you would get them and you're like wow i got this number one and you're like, oh this gonna be amazing someday and then yeah you're like oh wow this is number one anything. i'm gonna be rich yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i think for, go ahead thinking back, going back to the cost of why he changed i have um i don't know for sure but i have to think it's because everybody started wearing yellow and blue and it, over like you just don't match well, you know, that's a good point because like there was there was that point where they're like, OK, we're the blue strike force and then we're the gold strike force. So it make it might you might exactly be right. That might have been the reason you're like, well, let's make them kind of match more along with the, the blue strike force because that's what he's in. I like fashion, to think that they were the running most... out of brown paint and they're like, oh, guys, we have to switch to blue because we have tons of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, fashion comes first when you're fighting for mutant rights yeah. and lots and things like that. At least yeah, it's funny. You, you 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 think it's it's not like that but it is i mean it's like <laughs> the whole weed and run was about them going back to their classic costumes so yeah fashion first people which i always i liked i mean say to what i mean joss weed now is sort of like you just don't want to touch on the 10 foot pole now but um, yeah but uh i remember when first reading astonishing i'm like you know i, I anytime there's a they embrace and celebrate the bright costumes of superheroes i tend to appreciate that and whenever there's a reason it doesn't have to be the best, but I like a reason, you know? So I'm like, hey, I like this. Joss Whedon, you'll never do anything creepy or weird ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, where, I where can always the... trust you, Joss. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave my wife alone with you. It'll be <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to the next. I think we've, sh or at least I have shit on this guy enough, but <laughs> move on to the next. Again, Arthur, whatever the hell your name was, William Arthur Carter. Uh, shut up. Anyways, moving yes. on to the next piece of news. Let's talk about gaming news. Uh, Bods, I think, sent this to me, and it was just a clip. I, I'm not going to show the clip because I have no clue if, if Star Wars will copyright bought me or whatever. But Massive Entertainment and Ubisoft Studio is making a open world Star Wars game that's going to be apparently it's uh it's going to come out around 2024 2025 so long time away uh yeah. it's going to be using the snowdrop engine which i believe what was what was used in the other ubisoft game um the division i believe is what it was or and i think it's also for being used in the next assassin's creed as well uh it's going to be a massive open world game with uh, multiple galaxies to explore uh it's also gonna be heavily inspired by hogwarts legacy i haven't played the game so i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing uh but it's also gonna have heavy player customization and base building so bods is going to be like a you know a pig and shit at this point he's gonna be so happy yeah there. i mean uh, it's the only thing I, I i haven't heard anything about and, and maybe it's nothing to do with it um i just want to be a bounty hunter just yeah. want to be a I, I think i think it really is just like you could be um you know, a Sith or, or a Jedi. Cause I'm, what my son was saying, cause he was looking into it and he was, he's what showed me that um, it, to him, it seemed kind of like fable where it's like just, you know, maybe the actions you make kind of go the path you go down, you know? So I don't know because if, if I'm looking at this, I think it's going to be just like the last game they did the old Republic. You're oh yeah. The whatever big MMO. Whatever you want. Whatever you That'd want. That'd be amazing. Then I could be, a, uh, could but be the a problem Johnny is, Hunter is since ubisoft is the publisher um you're gonna get it's gonna be like promise a lot of big stuff but you're gonna get a lot less um yeah. they and plus the other thing you're gonna get is a game that's com not completely broken whenever it launches but it's gonna be broken enough to piss you off enough to want to wait till they patch it <laughs> yeah and so, by that point maybe your caring is dwindled away much like yeah. me and cyberpunk uh 27 7 yeah, I'm surprised you haven't even touched it yet. They've they patched no, that I've pretty got heavily. I, I've, I've got it, and I haven't even opened it yet. And I was like, you yeah, know, I, you really have still haven't opened Hitman, and I gave you Hitman, and that I is know. like the that's like the dad game of the year because you can play it for as much or as little as you want, and it has like short missions. Really great. You're a lazy bots. You're a lazy video <laughs> game player. I, I just I'm spending most of my time playing Fortnite with my kids. Yeah, Sp spending time with your kids is overrated. How many times do I have to tell you this? I just, I'm just so so sick of Justin, you're still here. Sorry. <laughs> oh. They're just going to put Nothing. you in a home one day, so you might as well ignore them now because they're going to ignore you later. Are you going to put me in a home when I'm old? Nope. She said no. Okay. Let's see, they'll tell that to your face, but they'll put you in a yeah. home so fast. <laughs> yeah. James will, though. No. 
James Bond. Oh, well, I can see that. I can see that. But anyways, I don't know. Uh, this is, uh, it's. I mean, it's so far off. The fact that we're even talking about this is a little bit crazy. I, I just wanted to uh, put it in there because BODs, again, BODs is a heavy, the heavy customization is probably tickling BODs. Yeah. New yeah. Player. And I don't know. No H, you're probably going to skip this completely. Um, what are we even talking about? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is, uh, this is a little bit of a uh, lull topic, I think, but. Well, what's funny is like you say the customization things, and I'm already thinking things. I was like, well, if I have to be a Jedi, maybe I could be a Witcher Jedi. <laughs> so it's like, I'm already thinking. I don't you think know, you, you you will shoehorn the Witcher into anything. I, like, it, it, it's possible. Let's put him in here. Let's put him in there. Yeah, Siri could have opened a portal, and you know, we could have gone anywhere. So, exactly. You know, well, you know what's funny is like Wads had no clue who the Witcher was, and we were playing. I don't remember what we were playing. Is oh yeah. Red Dead Redemption Online, uh, the two. No, I, I I knew about him before that. I just hadn't played it. You knew about no. You, we told you. Like, what you know, is it? You know how I knew about it because uh, uh, Omid said, "Hey, you should check out The Witcher because it's yeah, it's Polish and, and I'm Polish." Yeah, it was, was y'all, but like, and I'm like, "Shut up!" No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to me. Shut up. No. No, he told me that before we were we were playing that he mentioned him a long time ago. He's like, you know, it's like based on like Polish, you know, and Slavic folklore and stuff like that. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Uh, but he, he would tell me a lot of things that, that sound cool I never played, like Skyrim. He was telling me all kinds of cool things about that. And I was like, yeah, it sounds cool. I never played it. And then yeah. I've played it since then. But yeah, it's like uh-huh. one of those things. Y'all keep telling me things that are cool. And I'm just so slow on the uptake to actually enjoy it in the the, Plus, the heyday like of it super loyal you're super loyal to something that's old like for example uh, dc universe DC online. online yeah i've never met anybody who is so loyal to a game oh yeah i'm gonna go play really you're still playing that like i've Fortnite. never met anybody in real life who's playing it so yeah it's just it's hard to see uh it's hard to see you getting off of that to be honest but it's it, it's it's funny because like like i literally have a a, a league and, you know, and everything, and it's just me, and I have billions of dollars, and I'm 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 uber rich in there. I, I am Batman in that game, and <laughs> I just have to do everything by myself. So got, it's but you're in, you like have no friends, so you're really broody. And, I have, you know, I have no friends, so yeah, I, I literally am Batman. In there. All right, well, there's nothing more to say on this topic. Let's move on. This is just a short thing. Um, I am going to be speaking of video games. I'm gonna uh, be doing something called uh, Snarkade. We've done a couple of test streams of it, uh, and this Saturday, I believe, I will be playing Resident Evil 4, and I will, uh, if you're a subscriber on the channel, which we have two now that are non-organic subscribers, we need to mention that right now. Uh, when you say organic, these are like cyborg bot people? Yeah. No, they're, I mean, I mean they are organic subscribers. They're, so, like, people carbon that based. we didn't tell, people yeah. that came on uh, and, and actually subscribed on their own. Which is is really awesome, and it was after our last video that I saw these two guys jump on. I want to name them right now. Uh, there's a guy named Triforce Manny. He subscribed, and another one. Uh, I guess that's a guy, uh, and the other one is Toshi Baby. And that uh, those two people want to thank you for coming and subscribing to us. We really appreciate it. And if you want to see the stream, it's going to be this Saturday. I will have a time on the channel later so that you can go ahead and uh, get notified of that. But uh, I don't know what you guys and want to a, say. About a that. cash giveaway, if I'm, I'm, if no, I'm correct. No, right? no, no, no. See, this is no. how Boss gets us in trouble every time with his cash giveaways. <laughs> yeah. It, it, every it, it, you know, single time. It puts the butts time. in the seats. Yeah, I know it puts the butts in the seats. And then my butt has to pay for the seats. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Resident Evil 4, the chainsaw demo, it's just, uh, it's a, it was, we're a little bit late to the party on this, guys, because it came out uh, like last week. But uh, I wanted to do like kind of like a, a virgin playthrough i didn't want to play it and then go hey guys i'm playing this for the first time can you believe it no um so i haven't touched this demo just yet that's gonna be a lot of ty just figuring out like buttons and stuff and people yeah, have to... that's that's how i am i'm so like, oh, come on man don't you know this it's that <laughs> everyone makes fun of me uh, how do you walk how do you walk guys i don't know what i'm doing um <laughs> so uh yeah join us we'll have some fun bods i don't know if you're going to be there to watch the stream or hear me or whatever i might be able to yeah all right uh so when, now mo- go ahead the only thing the only thing i know about this is besides um having memories of playing the first version of this game is that 
I don't, you, you guys tell me if there's anything to this where there was, I read something like there's some type of thing where like they don't use a certain type of gun anymore. There's something they didn't do. Maybe it wasn't as violent. And then like the thing I see is somebody just getting brutally murdered by a chainsaw. So I'm yeah. like, I don't know if there's an issue there, but it doesn't seem that they are holding back for any reason. So that's just I a curious. I think that uh, at, at first he was using, I don't know anything about that. I know that from the footage that I've seen, he's still using the, the heckler and Coke. I believe that he was using in the beginning game mm -hmm. and uh, I've seen shotguns and I've seen, I don't know, seen a couple of things that he's used. I don't, I haven't seen anything too vastly different except for like the weather effects. And some of the characters have been aged up a little bit. Like that little tiny guy that was one of the, the main antagonists on the, on the game. He's been changed a bit, but I don't know. We'll see on Saturday if they've, change anything that i can see and i'll i'll mention it but it's also been years since i played this yeah. uh the original game uh and i remember really really enjoying it thought it was great so well i mean there's there's a new category we could kind of add into here for me and no h it's like how great is the main character's hair yeah and <laughs> since it's leon kennedy pretty good we're pretty so, dark and i'll say you know yeah we, we know, might care he, a little bit more graduated from the butt cut which was a good thing from the 90s yeah you know? <laughs> Yeah, he's got he got pretty pretty cool hair. I got I got to say I did I did rock the butt cut in the in the nineties and I I'm you did. ashamed of you it. Did. You yeah, did. I'm ashamed of you it. Did. We all but I we I all. could because I didn't have like a flipping a metric ton of of uh, calyx like Boz had where he had to kind of just yeah. go with whatever his hair would do. I, yeah, whatever it would do. But you know what? Uh, my son has pointed out in in his school that that is a new popular haircut again. Oh, the it's butt back. cut. It is back. Oh, those yep. poor those poor fools. They think it's cool, but little do they know. Little do they know. You know read it later. There's a funny story about Bod's hair in, in 1998. One day, we were in college. I think it's 1998 or seven. I can't remember. But one day, we we're in college and uh, we go to this place called The Hole. I'm not going to tell you what college it was, but we would go into this. It was kind of like a, kind of like a uh, recess in the ground where they had like picnic tables and stuff and, and trees and stuff where you could sit under. And one day Bod shows up there. I hadn't seen him that morning. And he goes, Hey, can I show y'all something? And I, and I immediately saw it. Uh, Bod's ha used to have long hair pretty much to his shoulders and past him at some times. And what he would do every morning as he was getting ready, he would grab the front two leading edges of his hair and he would pull them behind his ear mm -hmm. or either ear, you know? And yep. he was doing that one morning and he said, as he was pulling, he he felt the the two strands or not, not two strands two clumps of hair go blink blink they popped right out of his head and so he <laughs> had this bald spot at the widow's peak of his hair yep oh no it was it, it, i would i would pull it cuz i have such bad calyx that like it it, it was it was never even like and i was super obsessed about it so i would i would while i was drying i would try to pull it so hard like you know like it would just uh, it was such a bad calic that it popped back up so i got to the point where i was just pulling it out because i was just so you know obsessed with it being perfectly in the middle and straight and everything and the same and yeah so well, i never popped out huh? sympathize because i my calics aren't were never like that bad but they kind of in the back if left unmanaged and you know my son now he has calics as well but um i remember when i had long hair as well uh, we all had long hair at one time mm -hmm. and mine would get really curly at like the bottom. I like, I like the ends mm -hmm. and that would infuriate me because if you have curly hair, you just want straight hair to have. Like yeah. That. yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. And, yeah. um, uh, I would, I, I had, my only method was to like really like try to brush, brush, brush as if that would work. You know what I mean? Just brush. It would just end up tearing hair out. Mm -hmm. and i would i would be worried that like i'm actually shortening my hair i wanted to be long and now it's because it would get long and then like grow right like it wanted to go back up it was trying to tell me something yeah. like <laughs> it's it's like back in your head <laughs> like no we're really trying to go back home it's what they were down what they were doing <laughs> <laughs> my hair grew when it was long it grew into everybody said i looked like uh my wife said uh when she met me she was like you look like um Chavez y Chavez is what she said. Oh, yeah. Lou, no, yeah. Lou, Lou Diamond Phillips. That's it what did. She always it looked said. like Lou Diamond Phillips, exactly from <laughs> Young Guns. And like so, Ty, had, Ty had cool hair when, Ty, besides the butt cut, Ty could always have cool hair because he didn't have, 
weird. Well, I didn't have a lot. Yeah, I didn't have any of the weird stuff. But what was funny about my hair is it grows at a swirl pattern on my head. So what would happen too is as it was in it, you know how you have like you're growing out your hair and it's in kind of that like awkward phase. Yeah, uh, I, I called my awkward phase the lion o phase because what uh, happened oh yeah was because it would go yeah it pointed to my, the right side of my head so I would have longer hair that it would like point out to the side pretty prominently and I was like yeah this is my lion o phase <laughs> yeah. I from I went from a uh, flat top to lion o phase to Lou Diamond Phillips phase and then I think it got as long as my shoulders. And I was like, I can't handle it anymore. I got, I got to get rid of it. It's too hot. So that was well, my rebellious the, the, years is long hair with long hair. The, the, the swirl phase is, is natural because like in the back, you have like the little swirl, you know, uh, crown. Mm-hmm. I have double crowns, so it won't, it doesn't even know so which way to go. To go every, just, you had two it, ponytails, go everywhere. like <laughs> two like, pigtails it, going either way. It, I mean, it would just like, like my hair will naturally Wolverine. If, if that was acceptable, <laughs> I could go with it. Naturally it's Wolverine kind of awesome, it, it's it, Wolverine. That's, I could do a Wolverine haircut easy, but like uh, it's socially acceptable. I don't know. I don't think it is. These I don't see a lot of that. People rocking that. Is it Wolverine, Wolverine. <laughs> or Ace Ventura from When Nature Calls? When he hits exactly. Him. That's why I would just look like that. It would not be cool. <laughs> You're all righty then. <laughs> all righty then. <laughs> and all of this and more when Ty plays. Yeah, right. I do like, all part of Snarkade, baby. We're going to try to make this happen. It's an arcade. We'll uh, talk about hair, hair grooming tips, and <laughs> what to do about those pesky cowlicks. Well, cowlicks okay. and how to get right. rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the CW news that I know Bod's itching to talk about. And I have some nice pictures to go with them. Oh, those, yeah. Those are, those are good <laughs> pictures. Uh, yep. Apparently, and it is a bleeding cool article. So uh, I'm sorry oh, uh, uh, to everyone. Uh, but uh, apparently Jensen Ackles was pretty close to getting uh, into the Gotham Knights show as Batman, according to Misha Collins. And I guess that's the guy who played uh, Cassiel. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Bods, I mean, you're the one who sent me the article. If you want to take it away and tell us what you think. Yeah. Yeah. According to the article, uh, they were very close to having him do that. Um, and to, to what extent uh, I, I obviously not watched the show and um, I don't even believe it's out yet. But um, I don't think there's very much Batman in there except for like, oh, we found the body of Bruce Wayne, uh, per usual for these, you know, non-Batman Batman shows. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, since, uh, you know, Misha Collins and him are, are good friends in, in real life. Um, yeah, he just mentioned that article. And I think it would probably have been something that would have been cool. But apparently it was, it was uh, that was all filmed when he was uh, heavily into the boys. So I guess they just couldn't Amazing. make that happen. But hey, you know what? Maybe that body they find isn't Bruce Wayne, and then we'll have him come back later. You know, so that so he was heavily into the boys at the time. <laughs> heavily into the boys. There's got to be a better way to phrase that. So yeah, it's got to be a better way. Well, especially since, Ackles, but... from what I know about that character, he plays in the boys. I think he gets railed by uh, whatever the Homelander, the the uh, character that he's playing. I don't. I don't even know. I don't. Not, I don't not, watch the boys after the, the. Go ahead. Not in the show, but in the comic book, there's a there's yeah. a. There's gets, multiple versions of the of his Soldier Boy, I believe. Soldier but Boy, his version, it. his version, uh, no, he's he's actually really cool in there. Well, that's cool because yeah, another I, character you're kind of like, I know you're the bad guy, but I see your point. Does yeah, that make me a bad person. <laughs> but, yeah, Homelander. Uh, yeah, I do get confl- conflicting emotions about him whenever he like burns everybody because he's like, ah, screw this. You know, I'm like. Eh. You know, <laughs> if people, piss me, people piss me off like that too, and I had heat vision. Watch out, yeah. watch out, because I would burn everyone. <laughs> That's just me. I'm very hateful. If if you haven't guessed that from uh, watching the show Mutants, but yeah. anyways, um, yeah, uh, I like the idea of Jensen Ackles playing Batman in person and on. Uh, and see, doesn't that kind of like mesh up with the whole uh, we want to have? Uh, our voice actors also be the actors that actually play the character yeah. for James Gunn's DC uh, DCU. Yeah. And I mean, if it's not like, you know, you know, I, I think it'd be awesome if he was, but you know, the, the, what, what, the chances aren't like super great. That he's going to be the, you know, James Gunn Batman, but this is something he definitely could have done and it would have fit, you know, him being like mm-hmm. the CW Batman. So Yeah. 
would have been yeah, cool. But do you do you would've want him been. to be the CW Batman, or would you rather him be the mainstream? Uh, I'd, I'd rather Robert be the mainstream. Pattinson. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Maybe you save this for something that actually matters, and people will, you know. I I like to think years. that's exactly what's happening. I like to think he's like, no, I can't do it, Misha, because I'm going to be the real Batman. Yeah. I man, it would be cool, but I'm like. How are they not casting young Batman? Like, you know, like yeah. some 24 year old. And I'm like, well, they're not yeah, going to get that is true. But they, mean, they, they, they did say they want Batman older in this iteration than, than Superman. So in the case, then, you know, get the, uh, the middle aged Jensen Ackles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who, who, who looks good. Who, who still yeah, looks he's young. In so, he's in great shape. I mean, yeah. if we can get yeah. our middle aged and he's definitely, He's, yeah, he's a he, yeah. he's a middle aged mutant too, folks. Like he 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 literally his birthday is yeah I think, I think he's just like as old as really us. close to mine. He's he is he's like yeah same age I gotta as say, us. So. I don't like this suit very much. Uh, needs a lot more blue and a lot less uh, scraps <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah. And the the belt looks like it's probably from the Batman Begins and and uh, Dark Knight series because he had those kind of like metallic well it's got capsules on it i well, guess that's a good thing if i, I could don't know. If I, I i can only see a little thumbnail so i can't tell but for my from what i see from this little thumbnail it looks like like a bath like belt but i can't really see it very well so yeah it's got these it's it's kind of a mixture of the capsule belt and uh the pouches belt but it's all metal which that's kind of cool I I, I I do like the mixture of capsule and uh pouches i like that yeah i, I think he needs to have you know, like a visible grapple. Cause that's, that's the thing. I would think that if you gave Batman a holster and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. that'd be cool too, but have it like up high rather than on the yeah. thigh. I always think the thigh holster is such a, is such a hard thing to negotiate when you're running and Batman would have this thing flopping yeah. back and forth, flopping yeah. back and forth. I, I uh, like the suit, the suit from the, uh, uh, world's world's finest where it's like you know, that, that little panel where it shows like the, the cape in the wind and you see, he's got the, the grapple gun right there on the back. Of his yes. belt. I like yeah, that. That would look good. Yeah. I mean, I I will sympathize with the holster thing because whenever I run, I have a thing flopping back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a holster for that, huh? I need a do. Holster. A sheet. I want to say what kind of holster. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's called a jock strap. Um, <laughs> goodness gracious. Uh anyway, so yeah, I mean I like I said, for Misha, for Misha's sake, I hope not. I hope they don't cast him in like a little crappy CW show. Um, I would rather mainstream Batman, but I don't see that happening because I'm sure James Gunn has got some, I don't know, some idiot in mind. I don't know who it's going to be. He's it's probably, probably like, be. he's probably like Chris I'm Pratt as Batman. It's because Chris Pratt. Holy crap. It's uh, Dave Batista is going to be. Oh Batman. no! Goodness gracious! Now he so he upset. he said if he were younger he'd want to play Bane. I'm like, yeah, if you were younger, sure, maybe. I don't think he should play any character ever again. I do not like Dave Batista. So sad. I like his like wrestling. That's that's it. No, it's just his his opinions bother me. He's just such. Oh, a, he um, is. He seems like he'd be really annoying to be around, but yeah. I enjoy wrestling and that's it's fun. But. Uh, yeah. For sure, like things he says, I'm like, I don't know, man. You would probably be like, it'd be cool to meet you, get your autograph, but I'd be like, mm-hmm. okay, bye. That's enough. <laughs> Shut up. Don't talk anymore. You're ruining it for like, me. I am Tom. Do you want to hang out? No, it's like, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he just, I think he just became a default liberal because apparently his mother is is lesbian or something like that, and he's he thinks he's got. I mean, he's got to hate everybody who's conservative, and I'm like, you know what? Just shut up, dude. <laughs> I, I just yeah. get, get over it. You know, it's, of, it's it's a lot of people's problem. And, and the funny thing is, is I didn't used to be like this. Now I hate liberals for their opinions because they yeah. I'm like, since you hate you, since you hate everybody so much, I got to hate you back because I'm like, you know, it's just one good turn deserves another. So like, I, I'd rather just like, you keep your politics to yourself and then we can all get along. Yes. Yeah, like, stop pretending you didn't already win the culture war. Good grief. You guys got it. Let's just chill out yeah. you know and shut up and act shut up and draw <laughs> shut up and all that crap do whatever you do just shut up yeah and i won't hate you so much 
Speaking of uh, characters that are, well, this is actually a reprisal of a role in comic book VOD news. We have John Bernthal to reprise his role as the Punisher in the Daredevil now, Born Again series. Here is where we can talk about hair. Because, man, I got to tell you, I really like John Bernthal. Yep. I like him as the Punisher for the most part, even though I thought the material he had was a snooze fest. But when his hair was a little longer, I never liked it as Frank Castle because it's too curly. Yes, I liked it shorter. I liked it cropped like it or like it was buzz cutted in the second uh, season of Daredevil. I like that better. I think yeah, Bots I, had yeah. a problem with that though. Well, well it's all right. It's, know, it, it, it fits a character. Like it's like what he would do. I, think I just feel like I feel like he needs to like just be. If you want to do comic book, just slick your hair back. That's all. That's, time, that's all Punisher has time for. Just slicking your hair back. And he probably doesn't have the widow speak because he kept on pulling at it. And he's like, <laughs> but, but I'm yeah. like, fine. you don't have to have a widow speak. But I'm like, if you're not going to slick it back, and maybe John Bernthal's hair just doesn't work that way, which I can understand. So I'm thinking it would, but so I'm like, if you don't do that, it would make sense for this guy to just say, like, hey, I'm on duty 24 7. So I'm going to have my buzz cut going on. Yeah. Well, he's, he's yeah. also a soldier. That's what I think. He, he's a soldier yeah. first, and he's uh, you know, he's a fashion icon second, so he doesn't need his hair to be all. You know? <laughs> and he the thing is, I don't know. He's all anyway, he's really. all about that. He's all about that skull costume. He has to have that costume. And the only <laughs> thing, you know, he can have curly hair. I just want a skull on a t-shirt. Gosh darn it! None yeah, of this spray know, painting a skull. It always looks dumb to me. You know who the most accurate was? Who was not a fashion icon? Yeah. Dolph Lundgren. No yeah. skull at all. When no, did he yeah, know he, he was did, the Punisher? Really they didn't did tell not. you it was the Punisher. <laughs> I'm not. kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. kidding. My favorite Punisher is Thomas Jane. I know your favorite Punisher is Thomas Jane. And to ha- I don't know. I've met, I've seen Thomas Jane in real life, and I'm like, God, you're sure. Oh, <laughs> he is. Like, I, I mean, we saw him at that comment. He was really cool there because, like, I said, hey, no, can I'm have sure a he's a cool guy. But he's inappropriate. Short. And he was like, in the picture, he's like, you know, like, I said something inappropriate. He's like waving me off and stuff. And I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, no. He he was shorter than me. I was like, man, that's yeah, that's uh, weird. I I, I, I mean, he a, got super buff. So, but you yeah, know, still, like, I have a Tom Jane story that's kind of funny. Um, we, we were my wife and I were at Comic Con, uh, and I I was sitting in the line to um talk to Jimmy Palmiotti. Jimmy Palm. Um, if people don't know who Jimmy Palmiotti is, he was an inker for Joe Casada for years, and he now he's a writer. He still think he does some inking jobs. But him and Joe Casada were like a team. They they worked together forever, and then they went on to uh, work on their own company, company event comics later. And they, you know, that went defunct. But then Joe Casada ended up being the editor in chief at Marvel, and uh, Jimmy Palmiotti went on to be a writer for DC, I believe. Um, and I was sitting there waiting in line for him, and but in front of us was a uh, podcast, a couple of podcasters, and they had their stuff out, and they were inter- interviewing Jimmy. Uh, we, we yeah. were patient. We were patiently waiting. Uh, as we're sitting there, uh, and time is going is going on. This guy comes up, real short guy, skinny, pretty skinny guy, walks up in between, us, and he's got he's got shades on and a baseball cap and everything, and uh, he's he he looks like I think he had a beer or something. I can't remember, but he was like getting getting in between the podcasters and Jimmy Palmiani. He's like, hey, what's up, man? He's just Kind of like this little guy. My guy, my wife uh, goes, "Who is this crackhead? Think he is?" <laughs> and I go, "Uh, that's Thomas Jane." And she's like, "Oh, well, he he needs to wait his turn." <laughs> she got, <laughs> she rules got, are rules. Honest. She got pissed, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's okay. I don't think he's because when he fig- figured out what was going on that he was interrupting an interview, he was like, "Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah." And she, yeah. she's like, that's Thomas Jane. He is so short and he looks like a crackhead. And I was well, like, yeah. that fits perfect with the, the rest of development little story arc he had where like, yeah, he was um, homeless. Uh, they homeless thought he, he, was, he wasn't homeless. He was just, he no, was yeah, just, it was really know, Thomas Jane. He was studying for like a part like, <laughs> but like that's, yeah, that's when, when I saw him, I think he was just very laid back and just like, I, he probably has to dress down and everything for people not to mm-hmm. recognize. I mean, him, he but didn't like, look. To me, he looked like a uh, just a regular dude. She was like, yeah. "Oh, crackhead!" That's the first thing she thought. Well, this crackhead uh, wandered in here, 
And I was like, oh my gosh. Would, and she was saying it pretty loud. I was like, let's just stop saying <laughs> crackhead. Yeah. No, and so. I, 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 yeah, at the comic book thing, I, I went to the Comic Con where I got his autograph. Afterwards, uh, we stayed pretty late. Afterwards, he just went to the comic area just to like go shop because mainly everybody was gone and stuff like that. And yeah, just, mm-hmm. most people didn't know it was him because they didn't get his autograph. So just look like a, a normal dude and stuff. And yeah, he just walks around. I, I, I mean, he just could never I tried tell to him. pass off my my little headshot card to him. I was like, hey, if you need extras for, because he said <laughs> he was going to do something around here, and I was like, we need extras and. Obviously, it worked out good because I was in a lot of movies with them. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, no way no, too I famous wasn't. to be on this podcast. I was, I was way not way too famous, but cool, cool dude. But I'm glad, uh, that at least that, uh, uh let's get back to, I guess, to John Bernthal. I'm glad he's coming back. I yes. don't think either one of his seasons of The Punisher were all that great. Maybe bringing him back into the fold with Daredevil will be something that uh, revitalizes the character. However, and there's going to be a huge caveat to this, that is if they don't ruin Daredevil by PGifying him and they don't ruin the Punisher by doing the same because I have a little bit of a a sneaking suspicion that we're going to see the crappy Punisher that's the current Jason Aaron Punisher where he's like a, a, apparently he was a... School shooter in the making, and now he uses swords. And I'm, I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. The anti-gun Punisher, I guess, is that what yes. that is? Yeah, I guess. Ooh. I don't know. He's he's apparently in the comic books. He's this chosen one of the of the hand of the hand. He's yeah, gonna be like the Slayer or something is what they call him, or the the ultimate Slayer. I can't remember. I've heard a little bit of a. I'm going to go eventually and read this so I know uh, what I'm talking about and so I can shit on him properly. Well, What's but, weird um, about it is once in every generation, a slayer is chosen. It's usually <laughs> a girl. So this is what's throwing me off. This is so. what's throwing you. Yeah. So yeah. This really reminds me of the, that angelic punisher, like the first one. Oh, yes. Mark. Oh, yes. The 2000s or 99. Had, like the yes. little like glyph yeah. on his head. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where, and then thankfully Garth Ennis took over and he had like that. that you, you mentioned it because he has to. He's like, yeah, I did some stuff for a while. It didn't work out. Yeah, and that's all it was. But it's funny, like, right, that's when that is the point where Punisher got good again. Is Garth Ennis took over for that oh, run because it was so bad that they had a. I was oh, upset yeah. with that Garth Ennis run. I love the covers, the Tim Bradstreet covers. Oh yes. Oh, I was that, quite the fan. The yeah, same. Too bad Steve Dillon is just a terrible artist. That always took me out of that comic. I would start well, to read well, it, and I was like, "Oh, this is." Like we don't speak bad. ill of the dead here, sir. <laughs> Ooh. Well, you know, Tim is he Bradstreet, is he dead? I didn't even know that. Hey, Dylan, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's quite dead. Oh, that means yeah. I can I can shit on him without any fear of reprisal. Um, he's not going to do anything to <laughs> um, just just as a state's going to come after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his estate is going to is going to get me. No, no I, but, uh, I I just don't like it. It's too it. it's too plain, and like everybody looks the same. It's that it's kind of that British art form where like everybody has kind of big eyes and really gross teeth, and he, and he also did uh, he also did uh, the boys right. No, no, that's not him. No, that's not him. that was Derek. What's his fan or someone? Oh, Derek. Okay, uh, he did preacher. That was his deal. It was yeah, preacher. preacher. That's okay. right. That's what he did. And I know he, he teamed up with Ennis on another thing. He was indeed British, so that would kind of explain that. Yeah, why yeah. <laughs> he would the, the bad teeth. I don't know because I don't know if you've ever like when you take them in as a whole, the British comic book artists, they kind of have this like kind of like it's it's very Spartan yet kind of ugly, but ugly in a good way style. And Steve wasn't there. Um, I think uh, an <laughs> example of like a good artist who has kind of an ugly style uh, that I enjoy is uh, Frank uh, Quietly. I always thought it was pronounced Quitelli, but apparently it's it's not Quietly. I don't know. I always thought it, it was it it's is. Quiet, it's Quietly. Is what he yeah, that's said. what I thought it was. And he said know. it was it was it's a pseudonym because it's not really his name. Uh and it's it's just it's he it's kind of a play on words because it's like quite frankly. Uh but uh um, oh, okay. Frank, oh, that's cool. Frank yeah. quietly is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And uh I enjoyed his books. I mean, he like I said, it's kind of like an it's kind of an uglier style that's it looks good. He has it has merit. I I like it for what it is, but uh, yeah. Steve Dillon was not the guy. <laughs> I remember looking at his well, art and it was just like, oh, this is not. Well, no, I think if you were me and John at the time, we were we would see the covers and it's like there's a hyper realistic 
uh, Frank Castle. And like, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, and wearing a, just a t-shirt. This makes yeah, but sense. But it didn't look like, like that in the book stuff. at all. No, it didn't look like that in the book, but I, I do have a funny Tim Bradstreet story. Um, I think he lives somewhere around here. Cause I've seen him at comic cons multiple Not times. Not going to say where and, he lives. And, uh, he lives at one, two, three. Uh, no, no. Um, but anyways, he um, he was here signing for when they had the Punisher uh, uh, Tom Jane movie premiere. Uh-huh. He was signing posters at the theater. Yeah, for, I think you got uh, me one, for the you? opening night. Yeah. I, I did. And so, I That's what's funny time. is about that that story is like he was there, we're there. Um, we were getting multiple things signed and stuff. So my wife had to get one signed, but she's like, "Let's get one for her brother." And I was like, "Okay." I'll get one for Elliot. You get one for me. And, yeah. uh, and so we're, you know, he's signing the cover poster cause he did all the movie posters. He did the posters for like the show, like him, you know, uh, Thomas Jane, John Travolta. I believe there's another one. He did like another person that he did a, a cover for, but anyways, like when we're sitting done, we're out there, we're going to the parking lot and stuff. And like, I'm like, you got me the one with John Travolta signed. <laughs> I, I, I don't want a John Travolta thing. I think this is one of our first fights too, and like she she, she <laughs> went is, back this is up. Where there. the the rocky the 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 bods boat hit the rocks is over a poster, right there, That's over a poster. Because I was like, I got your brother the Thomas Jane one. I want the I don't want to picture the Punisher. I don't want to picture John Travolta. Nothing is John Travolta, but I'm I want I want the Punisher. You know. So, yeah. anyways, um, but like she went back not- up there. He went back up there, found him in the parking lot smoking a cigarette, and got him to come back in and sign a poster for me. So I've got that framed and stuff. So it's special in more ways than one. But well, that's um, cool. yeah, cool well, guy. Well, I'm happy Tim I didn't end up with the John Travolta. No, <laughs> but you know what? What's funny is like I I knew this, this is this is what's really weird is like I didn't know Tim Bradstreet was going to be at the Comic Con that that first time I saw him, mm-hmm. and I was there to see Thomas Jane. And everybody brings you know like punisher stuff for him to sign i brought a cover of it was the the crow city of angels uh movie adaptation oh yeah 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 he was the, the him, guy who's all the yeah gross he guy, was right the master he, he was like yeah, yes that was him that's how he is credited in the movie uh <laughs> i don't know what he's credited but um yeah that's what he's best known for but no he, oh, he was on the cover you, he's credited <laughs> well it, it's it's irrelevant but he mm. he was on the he's on the cover of this Tim Bradstreet drawn Crow Sea of Angels movie adaptation. So I was like, I'm gonna get him to sign that. And so I got Thomas Jane to sign that, and he was kind of like, Oh, that's cool, you know. Uh, and then t- Tim Bradstreet was like, Well, this is perfect. Like, hey, sign this too. So I got him to sign. to sign it. Yeah, yeah. I got them both to sign it, and it wasn't even on. I didn't it wasn't planned. It just worked out really, really good. So. Thomas Good Jane time. is credited as Nemo, the masturbator. No, I'm just kidding. It's just Nemo. Nemo, <laughs> Nemo the uh, masturbator sounds like some kind of like really obscure Marvel character. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was, like, a, I gotta he take was a herald for Galactus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was really a uh, method about it, too. <laughs> oh, oh, everybody's like, oh, Nemo's here. Oh, goodness. Nemo. Oh. Oh gosh! I wish he had a giant see. magnifying glass he, in front of him. While we never know where he's at. He could be doing it anywhere. I get out there and find Nemo. Where is he at? We wish we didn't. <laughs> he's like hiding behind an asteroid. He's like Nemo, Nemo. Hold, hold on Nemo. a minute. Don't come in. <laughs> me, meanwhile, there's a there's a Pixar executive in the in there thinking I've got an idea for a movie. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with with that. But that's cool. I I mean, like I said, Tom Jane, cool guy. Uh, John yeah. Bern- John Bernthal. I hope he. I hope he, I hope they do better. I do not have hope for it. Um, I don't. Well, the, I'm you, curious. You did how say much... that the time you liked him was on was in Daredevil. Your the time you liked him yeah, the yeah, most yeah. was when he was but in Daredevil. So that maybe... was net. That was Netflix. This is Disney. I'm a little bit worried that they're going to lower the. I mean, yeah, lower the rating to PG, yeah. and it's going to be something completely different. You know, because they've already they've already kind of crapped on him a little bit because remember he was on She Hulk and he had to do the walk of shame because She Hulk, yeah. you know, did whatever to him. Oh boy, and, yeah, She-Hulk. but that's 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 their show. That's her show. I, I feel we like hope. I, I don't know. When I when I sign into my Disney account, I've got to put a pin in because it only show like the mature stuff, like Deadpool and stuff like that. So I like to think maybe. Oh, well, you should worry you about know. Deadpool pull too. I'm telling you. Worry about everything you had before. <laughs> you know, worry. I would say I would say I'd worry about Deadpool, but did you watch the uh 
the Once Upon a Deadpool PG thirteen one. Yeah. yeah, it was funny. Like I was yeah, like, no, no, I no. yeah, you know, it was funny because it was it was being funny. But I'm yeah. not, I'm not telling you if they're not doing that as an afterthought, and it's all baked in where they're like, hey guys, we're PG thirteen now, and so he can't say you know can't do dick and fart jokes anymore. You're gonna yeah. be, you're gonna notice. You're gonna be like, oh, this is not dare. I mean, this is not Deadpool. It's gonna be the same thing with yeah. Daredevil. That you can already tell, like they've kind of taken it back to his swashbuckly roots with the uh, yellow and red costume, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with. He yeah. should have started with. He should have. They went more with the with Frank it. Miller uh, costume, which is great because that that was kind of a That's... re. That was kind of a re, not a retcon, but just a kind of a retelling and update to the character back whenever frank miller and john romita yeah i mean the, and that's uh, like the definitive daredevil too that's yeah that's, that's how everybody definitive. likes to see him but yeah. now that they're going to the yellow costume this is going even farther back to back whenever he was kind of a when he first started out he was kind of like a swashbuckling hey i'll see you again next time but i mean it was it's yeah. a different character than whenever frank miller so, got a hold of him and changed him so i'm a little bit worried that this might we might see some bad stuff come out of this on Daredevil's behalf and also on um, uh, John Bernthal's uh, behalf. But I, I I also wonder how much, because Born Again is the name of the series, right? Well, in the comics, there's there's a series called Born Again. It was done by Frank Miller. And mm-hmm. uh, it's it's pretty dark. It's it, it, it follows the story of Karen Page, who is now a prostitute, uh, not a prostitute, mm-hmm. she's a porn star. She's a porn star. Who's gotten addicted to uh, to heroin, and she's her looks are going down the the drain pretty quickly. She's got not a lot, you know, more in the uh, currency in that tank. So to the the drug dealer that she's living with, she has one little card to play, like one little piece of currency left, and that is the uh, identity of Daredevil. She gives it to him. That guy has connections to the Kingpin. It gets back to him, and then Kingpin goes and makes Daredevil's life a living hell for quite a long time and it forces him to like get darker and darker as a character and i just don't see disney doing that it's there's also another character in it who uh who um has ties to like the super soldier program who's addicted Mm -hmm. to this drug that makes him like hyper violent and hyper strong and all these things and eventually the avengers show up Uh, i think it's uh uh, i think it's it's at least captain america and iron man show up to basically take him out uh, which, which character to, to is take it? him in i can't remember his name he has a flag on his face oh uh, Nuke. Nuke? Nuke. yeah Nuke. yeah Nuke. he okay. actually was in he was in uh uh what what show did right. he it end up on? Uh, was Jess- it uh, what Jess- was that uh jessica jones yeah he was on jessica jones his character so yeah so he, he popped up on there he uh this the the daredevil born again to me is like whenever i read it uh, uh, you know I read it recently. I was like, "Whoa, this is their this is uh Marvel's anti-drug message basically." Because you had yeah. Karen Page all strung out on heroin and it messes up her life, which in turn messes up Matt Murdock's life because they I mean it goes Kingpin goes hard at Daredevil in that. He blows up his uh his uh, uh practice. He uh he basically gets him kicked out of his home. He uh, uh I believe he he freezes all his assets. I mean, he takes Daredevil down to just the rails, and then gets him uh, disbarred. Yeah, yeah, I think he actually does get him disbarred, if I'm not mistaken. Seems like that's something he would do. And it just hit after hit. It just makes Daredevil get more desperate and more desperate, and just uh, he, he wants to do this till he can basically just destroy him. And he calls in Nuke, uh, yeah. to be the guy to do that, and um. Nuke is ad- like highly addicted to all these these red blue r- red white and blue pills, and yeah. uh, he he eventually has to he he kills a lot of people that like it, it is it's pretty brutal in that book, and I just don't see Marvel uh, current Marvel doing that. I just don't. See I it. I don't either. Just for the fact that they haven't said that Karen Page is coming back, or it could be a so. secret. Who knows? Because that would be a great catalyst. Like if you said, okay, the show ended. Karen Page left. Uh, uh, Matt goes and does you know her thing i don't know if they'll go she became a uh <laughs> she a became porn a porn star guys i think what she initially had tried to do was go become an actress and it didn't work out so she started acting in other movies and then got addicted to smack and next thing you know it's all hell's breaking loose sound familiar no age 
my life that I know, and they <laughs> stole, and I will not be a dime for this. So, <laughs> but I'm first of all, my first concern is if Daredevil does wear the yellow costume, what's that one guy gonna think if it's like a video game adaptation? He's like, too yellow, I hate <laughs> yeah, too yellow, I hate this. I the just hate it. Really changed. But uh, it's like he has his old school Green Lantern power ring where he couldn't affect the color yellow. He hates it. But <laughs> I think the title Born Again is probably sadly going to be more about how Daredevil is born again, but this time on Disney Plus. And yeah, uh, no joke. Yeah, you're right. The marvelization, the Disneyfication of it, which I'm a fan. I watch like all of it, most of it anyway. And I've enjoyed the vast majority. And yet I still find myself being like, I don't know, man, but he's like, I'm really torn because I love me some superhero stuff, but I'm like, yeah, but the best daredevil isn't the superhero stuff. He's had some great regular, just tights and fighting bad guys and stuff. Yeah, level but stuff. The peak daredevil is Matt Murdock must suffer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and I'm thinking Punisher is probably going to be the same way, but, all will be forgiven if I see white gloves and white booties, <laughs> big canisters for the skull teeth thing. I'm like, you know, if you gave me that Punisher, I always, and figures, those, I always figured those would be like submachine gun. Yeah, uh, I thought the magazine, same thing. Po- Magazines, because they're yeah. thinner, you know. I figured that's yeah. what it would be. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, he's just I, I, over. I'm, I'm, like, I'm fairly, sh- I'm Billy fairly Club. sure. That, oh, go ahead. The Billy Club. Maybe they're like he breaks them off and he taps people on the head. Like, hey, stop. I'm punishing you. <laughs> I'm fairly yeah. sure the title is called Born Again because it's going to be an opening scene. It's going to be very short. It's just going to be Daredevil being a born again Christian. Yeah, Even though he's no. Catholic already. Even though he's Catholic. Yeah. Oh, I don't, he's switching religions. Can he be a born again Catholic? Is, it, is born again Catholic a thing? I don't uh, know. I think he's going to be. Well, born that's, again. that's going to be. Like, all right, let's get the show going. Let's get the if show the going. Catholic could all write in and tell us <laughs> about the Catholic faith. Tell us all about it, but well, uh, it, being a Catholic, you, I, I always think you're born into it. I, I, I don't know you're, people you're think, in for for life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even if you're not a Catholic, I, I, I think Dara Brian is fa- famously saying he's like, I'm an atheist through and through, but I'm Catholic. He's like, because I was born into it, and that's just the way it is in Ireland. But um, <laughs> that's the yeah. way it is for me too. I I I was baptized in the Catholic faith, so I'm Catholic. So. <laughs> Anyways, so moving Anyways. on from this topic, uh, we are going to start talking next about the Batman Cape Crusader series that right. was canceled by Warner Brothers. But Batman looks a little sad here, so let's turn that frown upside down for him because there we go. Amazon <laughs> went and picked it up like for that. two seasons. And so, yay for us because yay. I was honestly excited about this i would show the I trailer too. i would show the trailer but D- uh, dc warner brothers uh is not too happy about you showing their trailers they will copyright bot you and uh i just don't ha- i don't want to deal with that i did not uh, know there was a trailer so there is a trailer to... it, it's not really a and trailer it's actually it's a clip it's a clip from is the it, um from the show is it from is it from the um i know they said a lot of the look is going to be based off that little shorty did that uh, strange uh, um, something strange, strange days, strange something. He he fights Hugo Hugo Stranger. Um, yeah, that's the it one. Looks like, and, and, uh, I I don't know who the other bad guy is. He has kind of like a hulking bad guy, which I thought for a second it looked like Solomon Grundy, but I was like, well, Solomon Grundy doesn't look no, that. So I, I don't think, know who. I I think that was just someone they experimented on. It's like I want to say blockbuster, but like I don't think that's right. No, I think no, it's, no, it's not blockbuster. <laughs> no, I think it's just someone he he experimented on, and in the comic that was like one of the early early comic and if i remember right the way batman took that guy that hulking villain out was like the bat plane basically caught him with a rope and pretty much flew off with him by the neck and, and hung him you know and holy yeah. cow batman strap murdered him in the, the old comic books so. he's all, all of the day's work <laughs> I, I i like the look of, of it look you know old looking yeah. batman and you know classic I, we don't get that I'm weirdly a fan of this i even i, I even like the off like purple uh gloves and stuff because whenever Love this it. stuff was in capullo's run i i don't know if it was was it zero hour i want to say it was zero hour yeah it was and zero hour. he started yeah. off with like the purple suit i'm sorry not purple but it was like kind of had the darker blue 
and had the purple mm-hmm. gloves and all that. I was okay with it. I was like, this looks yeah. good. And he, he's going back to the old school comic days. And even the, even the ears were weird. Still. Yeah. I liked it. It, it. The zero hour was a good thing. I actually, I like court of owls better, but zero hour was cool because it ended up somewhere even cooler. Unfortunately, they never, to me, I never got like any conclusion to that. It felt like it just ended. Well, um, the thing that was cool about zero hours that the Riddler is not a punk for, for yeah. a change. It was an yeah. incredible set, and Court of Owls is awesome, but I've seen it a lot. That's One thing the, that was well now, but at then at that time you hadn't yeah, seen it a lot. At the time, it was great, and mm-hmm. that's one. Cool is, you know, one thing that was cool about it is how they worked like Duke Thomas in there in the past, and it wasn't just like a character they just kind of randomly came up with later. It was like, no, he actually had a connection to Bruce Wayne in the past. So, although I, I still, could, I, say I don't really understand Signal's powers to this day. I don't. I don't. I don't either. Like he, I don't for images or something. I'm, like, what is that I'm just glad he's not just a, a rando they threw in there. He actually had a tie in to Batman. He actually helped him when he was at his lowest and stuff. So is this the guy that was that ended up being hush? I can't remember. I'm trying to remember this character. To Duke Thomas. Duke Thomas. I, I I'm trying to remember no. this character. He's the, he's he, he becomes signal. He he was like the yellow suit. He was oh, the first to swim by Duke, I think, or they gave him Sigma came that name came a little after, and he wears I look this up because I haven't seen Sigma. Yeah, he he helped he helped Bruce Wayne really early on, like he was like hurt or something like that, and they were like helping him during that zero hour. Oh, he was, it's this it's the the black character he, that uh, yeah. The yeah we are was, I don't I totally don't remember him from the thing. I, I was, know you're talking about now because it was a little yeah. kid. Wasn't it a little, he was kid, a little kid in, in that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I know you're talking. So about. We are Robin. He's like you know a teenager and stuff. But yeah, he was a little kid when it first came out. So you know, good good planting a character. God, in the what past a crappy name though. The signal. That it's is supposed terrible. Like the bat signal, but yeah, but it's, it's like still a, terrible. That's terrible. They could have named him something I, else. It feels like he they was, did almost name him something else, and I can't remember what it was. He was. He. I think he was just Duke at one point. Not like he was his Duke. And then he again, was the Duke. A number one. A number that's, one. <laughs> you are the Duke. A number one. A number one. The problem with that is sort of like when Ron, Tim Drake is going by Drake for a while. This was like, gee, I wonder who that could be. So oh, what, bottom, was it? Was his name Lark? <laughs> Lark for a while. Yeah, it was Lark for a little bit. Yeah, I, I think know. the point of Signal was like he was supposed to fight crime during the daytime. They should have called him like Fruit Batman or something because the yellow makes me think of banana. <laughs> Fruit yeah, Batman. Batman. Fruit Batman. Banana was taken. Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I hate that name. It sounds horrible. But I did see the kid. Now I know who you're talking about. So we can. Yeah. I I can act like I'm in the know. No, I am. You're in the know now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for this. Um, I don't know if it's still got the same creative team. Uh, I'm a little bit worried because whenever I saw the interview about this initially, they'd said, "Oh, don't worry." Even though this is set in a, in a uh, pa- as a past Batman, it's going to be very diverse and it's going to have like uh, lots of modern sensibilities. I was like, oh, no, no, so no, 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 no. Don't bring anything that you like about this version. We're not going to have that. Yeah, that's code for it's going to suck. And we don't it's, care that you don't like it. And I'm like, ah, please, please. And if just- you do that, punks, they will fan shame the crap out of you. Yes, exactly. Well, you guys are racist. If, if something is bad, they will blame the fans, and it's just been going on a while now. Mm-hmm. Kel is old as 2012, 20, <laughs> 2008. I don't know. <laughs> at, least the last, at least the last Jedi. At least the last Jedi. So, but yeah, can't. I, I'd like to see more from this. Or, uh, you know, I hope Amazon has enough of a head on their shoulders to go, well, uh, if we see some edgier stuff, because they've had look, look at um, Invincible. I mean, they didn't yeah. hold back. They, they they were a little bit bloodier at times than I remember the comic book being, and yeah. it works. People love Invincible, and well, that was a different publishing company originally, and different this and that. Like I can see, um, well, the Skybound. I mean, it's Image Skybound, so it's Kirkman's like, property. I- I, I can see DC being like, oh, we're not going to do any of that. You know yeah. what I mean? So well, I can always <laughs> no hanging people from a bat plane. 
sorry throw some balls or something and do do something actually irrelevant. Um, but who knows? We'll have to see. They can win me well, over and they can screw it all up. Too far back, and they have hangings. We're not going to like who they hang if it's like <laughs> too far. Maybe we shouldn't do that. I don't know. Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> All right, and speaking of old cartoons, a uh, cartoon that they're not uh, I don't think they're going to edit, but um uh, I'm very excited about the Max Fleischer cartoons that super 17 theatrical shorts that they did back in 1941 to 43. And Max Fleischer uh was to me, if you if you've never seen these is the definitive Superman cartoon. It was beautiful. If you've not watched it, yep. You have to go check it out. It's actually really, really cool. Um, the the animation, especially because they weren't faking it. I mean, these days, if you see any cartoon, most of it's done uh, via computer. This stuff was like hand drawn am- animation. They were doing every frame on their own. I believe they were doing it here in the states, and it just looks awesome. And I'm excited now that it's going to be on Blu-ray. I- I'm hoping they don't, you know, mess this up because some Blu-ray releases you get are you know, it's hit or miss. Uh, people will say, Oh, they cut this out or they cut that out. I'm kind of hoping we just get the raw awesomeness. That was the Max Fleischer, um, Superman cartoon. Um, yeah, yeah. Those, those would just kind of show up as a kid. You know, it's weird. It's like, you know, these, these came out a long time ago, but it's weird. Cause we were watching cartoons from like the thirties and forties. And we didn't, we were just like happy to see cartoons yeah. like Popeye and like old Looney, Looney Tunes. Tunes and all and that. that was, that was yeah. old stuff. Yeah, and it was we're great. just like, no, it's a cartoon. We're a kid. We we don't care. We're just happy to see a cartoon. It's like, it's so a cartoon. I was jazzed to see Superman. And I really, yeah, the Fleischer, the, the old ones, I mean, they're great. They're sort of, in a lot of ways, peak Superman, like, in, in really in a very pure form, kind of like the core of what Superman is. I'm just like, anytime it gets recreated, I'm like, you should leave it alone. Yeah. yeah. That, to it, me, like, if, if I'm right, this is where they, like, kind of, made him like fly fly right uh um, i don't know because he for they animated he reasons in a single bound and he jumps over this building i don't i don't yeah. honestly I, remember I, if i recall I thought, correctly, the flying came from a radio broadcast oh, i'm okay. not sure for some reason i thought it was this because like it was easier for the animators to make him fly than than jump oh i'm you know? sure so maybe uh, yeah i'm not sure I'm, jump I'm quite a bit to get like, to some of the places he's trying to get to in this yeah um, so, I don't know. I don't remember uh, uh, that. I, I remember the episodes that I liked were the one where you had the, uh, like the classic stuff where you had to stop the volcano. And yeah. um, he had a basic, there was this really cool scene where the, the lava is coming down on it and he spreads his cape out, which I don't know. This would not work. He spreads oh, yeah. his cape out and covers, because uh, I believe he's trying to protect Lois. And the, mm-hmm. vol- the, the volcanic lava just goes around. And I thought that was so cool. And then. Yeah, the episode where, uh, and it was really beautifully done. It was the one where you had the robot, the automatons, and they these really crummy looking robots, but they they moved so nicely and realistically on the um, cartoon. They would go to a uh, a bank and they would get shot at by the cops and everything. They would empty out the vault into this like drawer, which I thought was hilarious as a kid. They they had this big drawer in the front. Well, where's the room for all the other like servos and electronics to make this thing work? <laughs> There's no room for that crap. And they'd sit there and they'd <laughs> dump all this jewels and money into there. And then they would like lumber out of the bank getting shot at. Then they would kind of like transform into a kind of a plane. A propeller would pop out of their head and their arms would get longer and grow wings. And then they would fly off. And I just thought, I always thought that is so cool. And you don't see and, anything like that these days. And it makes me sad. And the one where he fought uh, Doomsday was okay i don't remember I and mean, i know doomsday <laughs> was like around back then fought, but... like popeye or something they're like oh <laughs> he's like oh, cool. it's gonna, you think you can take me oh, you know? <laughs> oh i like to go swimming with bow-legged women <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so i don't know i i i think that this uh is gonna be something i definitely pick up oh i know i definitely gonna pick this up and just enjoy it again and again because i like some i like me some classic superheroes yeah, especially yeah. Superman it, and Batman. I really like that stuff. So yep, make superheroes fun again. That's make superheroes fun again. Fun. exactly. I'll tell you exactly when this is coming out too. For those who are actually uh, interested, let me look right quick. It was a comics beat article, I believe. It says it's going to be available 
May 16th, 2023. So if you're listening to this in the future, and this is all that's left of human civilization, yeah. you still might be able to find a copy because it'll be out by then. Yeah. You can go to the rubble yeah. of some Amazon warehouse yeah. and pick it up. It's there also you will be able to find it. It's also going to be available digitally through Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Google Play, uh, Vudu, and more. So uh, the internet's not going to be a thing in the future, so you're probably not listening to this either. So this yeah. is all a moot point. Unless they downloaded it and you know burned it to like a CD or something. There you go. If you, you found or, a copy in the rubble, that it's it's probably all it's scratched up. You're probably not going to be able to play it. There's probably yeah. no power now because it's kind of like Book of Eli going on right now. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's probably, probably going to just used... be like aliens hearing it through radio waves, but this is on the radio. So so I don't know. Space at the time. Aliens are going to anywhere. what the theatrical releases of of a theatrical shorts of Superman and Max Fleischer were. You really missed out. Sorry. So. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on to another topic, celebrity comics. Now, this is not, like I said, this is not going to become a new thing on this channel. I have other things that w- I want to talk about, but I'm gonna I have try to, to make bring this up. Thing. No, it's not going to be a thing, Bob. Okay. You're not going to fight me on this, but anyways. Right, um, I, have to, uh, I have to talk about this because this one in particular made me upset. Okay, so apparently Jamie Lee Curtis is co-writing a graphic novel with uh some other guy i can never remember this guy's name um let me look it up but anyways they're writing it it's they're calling it an eco eco horror book and uh yeah it's it's as stupid as it sounds she's uh, i believe the artist is named carl stevens and the guy who helped her pen it uh let's see russell goldman i don't know who he is says he's a filmmaker Okay, I'm gonna have to use this graphic for the first time. Uh, which one is it? <laughs> I got a lot of problems with you people. I so much. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. So this is about a. Uh, let me switch feeds here too, because I'm gonna have to show you this this load of horse crap. Uh, da, 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 da. this one is it? This one? Yeah. Okay. So. She uh, is telling a story where they're in New Mexico and okay. uh, she, her dad works in the oil. Wait, field. Wait, real quick. Is the rumble from the, like the Activia working or is it ah! something <laughs> geological? <laughs> I, I'm She's just like, wondering Hi, guys, I gotta go to the bathroom. Or... Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just, no, you're fine. You're fine. So anyways, she is uh, writing a story about uh, it, it's it, the, the name of the town is one I'm not aware of. It's uh let's see here. Four uh four corners. No, 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 that's not the actual town. There's another town they they mentioned in here. Uh I don't see it. Anyways, it's close to the four corners. But anyways, uh the, her dad works in the oil field and he one day it has her with him, which this happens from time to time when you work let me have family in the oil field. Uh mm-hmm. they go to a pump jack and they hear a weird creaking sound at the pump jack. Now, I don't know about most people that have anything to do with uh, with uh, maintaining maintenance pump jacks. But uh, I, when it's creaking and shit, you don't walk up to it. You probably have a crew of people to come fix this. Well, her her dad walks up and he starts to see all this crap on the ground. And I'm guessing it's crude that's been like spilling out, which that means there's there's something wrong. Something's broken around the uh, the the. Uh, front end of the pump jack where the polished rod is going up and down into the to the actual pump underground pump itself and Pinky. the the pump jack that we used to call these we call them grasshoppers some people call them the nodding donkey uh pop, pops off somehow and crushes her dad's head and i was uh, like mm, i don't know that not. that's not how it works jamie that's not how it works uh, she, uh, so basically what this is, is like, oh, the, uh, the, it's going to have something with like, she loses her dad to this, which, and she, and I guess she blames the company, uh, the, 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 they killed him and it's the earth <laughs> it, uh, to me, she should be blaming the earth because if, if anything is going to make this crap fall apart, it's going to be like an earthquake or something like that. But I've never even heard of that happening. Uh, this is to me, this reeks of 
of her not knowing a damn thing about this this industry and trying to demonize it uh in her liberal way and i'm like shut up i mean there are people for years that have been fed and clothed by this industry and i'm sick of the liberal media i'm sick of liberals in general coming in and demonizing this industry for their own gain so they can get the feels and oh guys we the mother earth you can be horny for the earth all you want that's fine stop demonizing the oil industry nothing would work in this world if it wasn't for people that went out and did this every day this is our job and they don't deserve you to be shitting on them and making it harder for them to make a living just shut up hippie as no h would say <laughs> and i also a- want to point out to jamie lee curtis if there there is almost virtually there is virtually no way this would ever ever happen let me let yeah. me show let me show you jamie how this that's not even this, the right that's not even a right pump jack yeah well here's here's the pump jack that she's talking about right here okay so as we know because me and bods know about this uh the most of the maintenance is done here right here on the back with mm-hmm. the prime mover and the gear reducer these this portion right here the nodding donkey or the the grasshopper whatever you want to call it uh is connected by a bolt via here a gigantic bolt via here and it's bolted here as well too and then here on the rear rear it has another gigantic bolt this portion here the the actual part that pulls the sucker rod out of the ground uh or actually the polish rod and, and uh, against the stuffing box this part right here is connected by two cables as well if this part was to fall off that means this part would have to fail this part would have to fail and this part would have to fail all at one time to crush. They basically have to be like a world rending uh, earthquake or something to actually do this. Like the ground would have to split in half. And I don't even think then you could tear this thing apart that easily. Because even if she said just the head popped off this thing and crushed her dad. Well, what would happen yeah. is the head popped off here. Uh, it would actually fall straight to the ground because underneath there's this gigantic pump that's a weight that's pulling would it suck down. this to the ground and yep. you would have to be like standing right here next to the stuffing box to get smashed. So how about you? How about before you say anything about guns or you say anything about uh, the oil industry or you have a, a, an opinion about anything in the world, how about you take 10 minutes and you actually go out there and, and do a little bit of research because you're talking shit and you need to just <laughs> shut up hippie. So whatever you so, want to say now, people do get get hurt and killed by these things, but yeah, not but they're like usually that. trying like, to ride it. Yeah, they're riding it, and they get hurt on those on the things that move on the back. The things, yeah, that, you get drunk, that rotate, you the try to go or up to the top and sit yeah. on it, and you fall onto those. Those are big counterweights. Those, yeah. those this right here on the back, that's a gigantic yeah, those, counterweight. Those what will get doing whatever is goes. It's trying to it. add like momentum because this prime mover turns this gear causing this to spin and this an immense inertia you gain from these going down and then around down and then around causes this to get pulled up and down as it goes. And so it takes 10 minutes to figure out that you're, you're that this is not possible. And this is just a, it's a blatant attempt to demonize the people that are in this industry. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. What would you say? What would you say? The interior artwork. How, how do you think they 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 colored it? What does it look like to you? I don't know. You know what? To me, it looked like. Uh, let's see. This looks like almost like watercolor or matte pencils mixed with it, gouache. It doesn't look like a comic. I mean, the artwork's probably it's fine in its own right, I guess, but that's not a traditional comic. And comics. Uh, forms which is fine but it looks like photo reference that they painted over i'm just wondering if they if it was painted what that paint was made out of oh yeah <laughs> was no it made joke. out of oil yeah oil painting probably right? yeah what was Maybe. this little girl's shoes the, the the actual plastic on the bottom and, and rubber what was what, what do you think was the process that you that created that what do you think the printing process was do you think they used yeah. any oils in there too god almighty the, even Maybe. the electricity used to to run the printer to print this this human toilet paper. I mean, I mean this com- comic <laughs> toilet paper. The thing is, I just, if if they were ahead. really if they were really serious, they would go all or nothing. Get off your phone that was made by like a mm-hmm. 
off your phone that was made by like a four year old who didn't yeah. get any and um, who the only daylight they saw was they were peeking out the window looking at that suicide net, seeing if they could make it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and uh, so I'm like, well, stop using your Apple computer for one thing or your yes. Apple phone. Unless and, you got all solar, stop using it. Right. And I mean, it's Jamie Lee Curtis, Nepo baby, uh, who mm-hmm. has weirdo imagery of like a boy, a little kid in a box in her office. Super creepy. Yeah. Uh, this, the more I learn about her, just the more I don't like her. And yeah, she threw the biggest fit when um, everything everywhere all at once came out. And like the uh, uh, Doctor Strange movie came out. She, this is supposed to be, this is a senior citizen who's supposed to have some more class mm-hmm. and basically throwing a hissy fit acting. I'm like, she shows some dignity and grace. I'm sure she's laughing it up now that that movie won Best Picture. Uh, but uh, at the time, it's like, don't go see this stupid Marvel movie. They probably won't cast me now. I'm like, wouldn't you think well, the better thing to say would be, hey, if you're into multiverse stuff, there's this other movie. There, yeah. Hey, this audience that's here, also check out our movie, too. That's what yeah. I would think. I, so. That's I agree. It's... <sighs> To, you would she, think it's just again she's creating con- she's creating controversy for her own game because that's what this is this is going to get made yeah. into a movie this particular piece of shit is going to be made into a movie and she's just at the time she was creating controversy for everything all at once and now she's creating controversy for this for this thing and it is, there's nothing genuine about any of this it is revenue stream after revenue yeah. stream and it's why of- it's it's why because uh, you know she's she knows what she does she knows what she uses every day she knows that she could not function as a human being if there wasn't an oil industry she knows that th- these things they just they they have to go oh i'm i'm really horny for the environment so i really have to act like this all means so much to me and i'm like yeah whatever you're, you're just a virtue signaling face like an upside down distended scrotum <laughs> has been and i'm sick of seeing you on things and you need to just go away get out of the movie industry and get out of the comic book industry especially you know what stay in the movie industry get out of the comic book industry i don't want to see you here yeah it's yet like you mean to tell me it's some wealthy celebrity who's out of touch is trying to lecture you on something that they don't know what they're talking about yeah it's I'm so sure bizarre what, what does her bentley run on like granola and like like fairy farts i don't know what i don't I know mean, what she it, thinks i mean after halloween kills pretty much sucked an egg i'm like you know what let's just stop yeah. let's just stop i didn't even bother with the third one the halloween ends because it just looks stupid i just can't she, i can't imagine how many uh, endings you can have to a series it's like oh this i mean is the next Hall- halloween h2o is where it peaked the <laughs> <laughs> the Halloween the homecoming. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I, there got to be a joke there. I have not seen it. I gave up on Halloween after like the sec, uh, the third one. Is it the third one with the Halloween masks? Or is that yeah, the second one? That's, Season of the Witch was famously or infamously the non Michael Myers one. But yeah, that's where I gave up. I was like, oh, this is. I mean, it's you know, on its own. It's kind of cool, but it's not. It's not like I don't think of it as Halloween. I will give you True Lies. I do like that one, but I'm. To this day, I'm like, yeah, True Lies is fine. The, well, now you can just watch the show on on CBS. Yeah, you can watch the show now. But um, and I will say, this is a person. This is coming from a person who's had to deal with her her Maffetite rumors her entire life, or his. <laughs> life. I, I I don't know that that is a mystery. That's up. In well, the now air. she's got to deal with like the you're a pedo, like uh, because of the gross picture she had on her wall. You're, yeah, what's wrong with and, you? Like, I'm not even gonna go near her son or daughter whatever it is now that's like it is yeah and i'm sure this right here is just a self-insert character she just wants to re be young again where she can be young again self-insert in something that, honestly i don't think she has any clue that she's talking about this part of the world this industry any of this stuff it's you should always write what you know write that hey i'm a nepo baby who's <laughs> lost her looks and now nobody wants to hire me unless I look uh, play the part of a grandma. There, that's your comic book. Write that one, and then we'll yeah. care. But this one, stay stay out of this. Just stay out of here. You, you shouldn't be in, talking about politics, and you sure as hell shouldn't be talking about the oil field or yeah. superheroes. Stay out of it. Stay out of it. Yeah. 
but uh, somebody who should throw their hat into the ring, and I'm happy to hear about it, is a Mr. Michael Dorn. Oh, another celebrity, oh. celebrity comic. Mr. Michael Dorn is going to be working, uh, well, better known as Worf, though for those of our listeners who don't, I don't know how you don't know who Michael Dorn I guess you could look at this picture and go, I don't know who that is. But if I show you this picture, I think that you know guy did a voice Worf. on Gargoyles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, he's going to be working on uh, John Henry's character. Uh, oh, the, the the series is going to be called Steelworks. And oh, which, go ahead. Uh, which is cool. I always like the steel character. And one of the things that attracted me to the steel character, not that, well, um, for one thing, his name is Steel. Like there was already a Steel. It was Commander Steel. But anyway, um, but I like <laughs> I liked about Steel is like when the reign of the Superman, he was the guy not trying to claim he's any, he's like, I'm not Superman. I just, yeah. Why is like the Eradicator or the Cyborg? Yeah. What did or, they end up just, calling that one the Cyborg? Is that what he was just known as? He was cyborg just Superman at the time. He was just, and there was already another Cyborg in DC. So it's kind of funny. But uh, what, was he, uh, it was in that, at that point, was it Hank Henshaw? You, I think. I I don't know if he, he he certainly ended up being Hank Henshaw. I don't know if he if we were ever meant to understand that he was ever anything not that, yeah. or if that origin came after the fact, which kind of feels like it. But but yeah, no, you're you're right. He was like the only one who was all like, yeah, I'm I'm just trying to help out. I'm just yeah, and trying to help uh, out where Superman would have. I'm assuming Natasha Irons is going to be part of that because if you have Steelworks, I would assume you would have some type of the the family yeah or starlight or whatever name she's going by but um but cool um michael dorn's like deeply immersed into the nerd zeitgeist yeah, the pantheon he you can't kick him out yeah. at this point yeah he's and, and as far as i know he keeps his mouth shut which is great i'm i'm down for it. if you're already in here and you want to say something that's fine i think it's weird that you have to be black apparently to write for steel i don't think that that should matter well, at all it shouldn't, but the it shouldn't. But I've noticed with a lot of black characters, the white writers will get in, in there, and they're so afraid of writing anything offensive, the characters end up boring. They oh well, don't really, yeah, that is a, that is something I didn't think about. Like they have such a lack of personality. Like John Stewart's been so boring for so long. Even si- Victor Stone, I'm like, because they're like, yeah, I'm not going to risk writing him saying anything that has any personality because that can be interpreted in so many ways well plus that's too, the, they purse puppy every uh they purse puppy every black guy that you see because like <laughs> blade for example in, in in marvel he they basically took him from a badass and then they purse puppied him they turned him into this little cutesy guy who's he's now a teacher and he wears sweaters and then i'm like what i mean don't <laughs> why do you have to make them like non-threatening non-offensive non-offensive is, is is it too scary to make uh, a black guy who is actually like kind of assertive or he might be angry about something or he might have a you know some arc other than hey guys i'm not scary you can trust me and i'm like i don't get that i i, I don't get why they do that these days yeah, it's 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 all just being afraid of offending people, and I'm like, I can see we were. I mean, Blade was Blade was it back in the day. Freaking yep. love it. it's still oh, yeah. whole. That's not about all we had to begin with. So it's oh, like, yeah, yeah, we love. I, I have a confession. I saw that movie whenever Blade came out in '98. I saw it nine times in the theater. It's so good. <laughs> I so, was like, whoa, <laughs> this is the first like Marvel movie I've seen. Because before that, we had the Fantastic Four movie that didn't come out. And we had yeah. Captain America that was shouldn't have come out. And yeah. then I went and saw that thing. And I was like, what? This is awesome. And then I just loved everything about the the character that they kind of like updated. Because in the comics, he's he, he is cool. I liked him when yeah. I, I read Rise of the Midnight Suns. I liked him. Before that, he was he kind of was a black exploitation character. Bods yeah. brought one of his books over. And it was like, whoa. They yeah. did not shy away from like he had all the slang and everything. He's like blood like, and drac and I mean, he, he, was, was, he was he was like black dynamite before black dynamite. Yes, so. that's exactly how I yeah that's exactly a good way to to describe him. And he but, but, yeah he also he used teak wood knives. He wasn't using blades. Oh like yeah, that. he had yeah, like wooden would, teak wood knives. Yeah, that's right. I remember that we were so into blade. Remember we thought his boots were cool. Like we 
We had to get like I boots like everything his. he had was cool. His boots. Yeah. I really liked his sword because it was unique for the time. I thought whenever they, because in the comic, you'd always see him like with a kind of like, like a katana or like a flash in yeah. or, you know, something like that. And then they're like, well, no, no, no. This time he has a rapier that is like this thicker blade. It's kind of like the in between, like a, um, like kind of like almost like a broadsword and a rapier. It's yeah. Like this middle point. And it, the cool part where like it, it almost had like the Judge Dread thing where like if you, yeah. you touch it, someone you don't else know to flick it. that switch off. Yeah, it cut your hand yeah. off. That kind of stuff was yeah. super cool. And it was additions oh, that I'm like, cool. well, this makes sense. This makes sense, but uh, it doesn't stray so far away from the character that I'm no. digging right now that I, I don't want to see it. And uh, that's the kind of if you're going to change up a character, that's the kind of way to do it. So I, just I don't know if tactical. You, if you ever played. Um, like uh, San Andreas Grand Theft Auto, mm-hmm. where you can customize your character. I, I don't. I didn't like the idea of being just like a like a gangster character. I, I just made him Blade, in yeah. there, and then I was <laughs> like, "Oh yeah, you're cool now." Like, yeah, you, you could do no wrong. Yeah, no say, Wesley Snipes. I thank you for playing that part. You were awesome. You did everything right. You got screwed yep. over so bad in the end. I cannot it's believe just- how bad they screwed you over. I would be mad at Ryan Reynolds uh, and uh, what was the other lady's name? She's married Jessica to Justin Timberlake. Bill. Just gonna Jessica, be. Like, uh, I would be Jessica so Bill. pissed at them and the producers who who because they were they were that. trying to spin off a Night Stalkers movie, yeah. right? That yeah. never happened. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it, but that one hey. that was the one that was terrible. It had it, such a goofy tone. Blade's yeah, yeah. Like the Blade one with it. Triple H in it. The yes. wrestler. Yeah, little dog yeah. too that was a was a vampire the little pomeranian and that was that was triple h's dog if i'm not mistaken <laughs> it was yeah <laughs> but i do think that the second movie got co-opted by and i you know i don't know if you guys ever saw that movie the the tv show the strain uh yeah i always kind of uh, was upset that in the second movie with a uh, play two that it was kind of just like oh i have this idea that i want to put that I always wanted to make a, a a movie out of. This is Guillermo del Toro talking. I'm uh-huh. gonna just shoehorn it into a Blade movie, and I was yeah. like, and and my wife, she's always like, oh, I like that one better. I was like, no, I like the first one better. It I just like the first one be- better. First yeah. one is all yeah. time. I remember, I remember me and Ty were like, like there was like we found deleted scenes. They were like, man, you know, we're like, what's the next movie gonna be? Like, what could it be about? Will Morbius pop up? We were like, just our our imaginations were running wild because mm-hmm. we. We had no Ghost Rider was, show up, all yeah, that stuff. Was that wouldn't that be cool? Spider Man was walk crawling on a building in the background. You know, we were mm-hmm. just like we were thinking about like the extended universe before that was really even a thought. Yeah. We just, Little did we know that all the rights of all that crap, like Morbius and that stuff, yeah. was never gonna let us see that stuff. We yeah. were kids, we didn't understand the rights and all that stuff. We just, and it, to be honest, the Marvel universe. Uh, Spider Man, all like the spider, the what we're calling Spider Verse because Sony did that. Um, yeah, you all owe your success to Blade because to Blade. it showed they how a superhero movie could be. Yeah, and New Line was going out of business, but they made an awesome movie. And you, the fact that everybody goes like Black Panther, like, well, the first African American uh, right. superhero for I'm like, bullshit. Blade was there first, and he was better than uh, Black Panther. I've seen Black Panther a grand total of once. I've seen Blade about three hundred times. Yeah, yeah. I you're say, never gonna tell me. Go ahead. The Black Panther wait. movie. Black Panther movie. It's fine. Uh, it's, it's just it's okay. It's, it's as good and bad as any of their Marvel movie. It's it, that's it's uh, that's pretty much it. But we're yeah. forgetting the maybe the first real black superhero movie steel to taking it back with Shaquille oh <laughs> yeah but you know what that didn't kick off anything <laughs> kicked uh, off absolutely it, nothing it did nothing it was like oh, oh god this is as bad as Shaq Fu yeah. did not kick <laughs> off Shaquille O'Neal's career or anything no it, not his film career anyway but because uh, Sam helped but um, <laughs> yeah well it goes to the thing I said about Robocop you cannot put a giant man in a costume and expect nice. it to look cool. It's gonna look weird. Yeah, it's gonna look like a big bulky. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're gonna. You, we talked about that before. And it's like it's supposed to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. You saw how he looked as Mister Freeze. So that's mm-hmm. how. That's how you, he's gonna look. You'd expect it. Yeah, he can't fit through the door. He can't get can through the door. Him, can you imagine him? Like that? Alive, you're coming with me. You know, it's just. 
I can't he- I can't hear it. I just ah, it's creep. Yow, yow, yow. you know, just it would have been bad when he's been shot really <laughs> yeah, I, bad. I, I'm, yeah, I'm like it's, yeah, I would feel like he would get too too emotional in it, you know. Uh yeah. well, Peter Weller's like, I'm a robot. Drop yeah. a creep. My name's Murphy. You well, know. sometimes he, I mean he would have done the Terminator thing, which if if you you know how he was and he's all in, in the second Terminator, how he was like, Why? Why why should we do why? this? Why? Just it would have been just yeah. all questions with him. Yeah. I need oh. to close your boots and your We're motorcycle. Gonna- uh, a naked lunch should be the next Peter Weller uh, thing they turn into a, a game. I want to see a first person shooter of Naked Lunch. <laughs> I have no clue who that is. What is that? Naked Lunch is a super weirdo movie that came out in like the nineties. It's 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 bizarre. It's something to look up on your own time. But uh, you don't yeah. you don't want a you don't want a Buckaroo Banzai uh, video game. Nope. only you Naked Lunch. Play. Only Naked Lunch. All right, all right. You could have played as uh, Jeff Goldblum's cowboy character, but okay. You know? Or his yeah. villain <laughs> character from Dexter that one season. That but one did, season, yeah. Anyway, so but uh, I really love the idea of Michael Dorn writing Steel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know we digressed yeah. really hard right here, but yeah, and and oh, and by the way, when did uh, when did John Henry start dating Lana Lang? I had no clue that this was a thing. So I, mean, that, I don't know when that started, but that's been a thing. Uh, I remember seeing that at least in the Superwoman comics that came out where at the time, this version of Lois was from a previous timeline and she was like merged with Lana at the time they had, they could form together and become Superwoman, which was the electro and they became like the electro powered uh, Superman sort of a version of that. So that's not entirely new. I just don't know when that started. And all I know is Lana Lang will not go back after this. <laughs> <laughs> Just forget Clark. Forget uh, calling it Clark. <laughs> oh, God. No, I just love that joke. I got to say, that was chef's <laughs> kiss. Chef's kiss twice. He's man. probably awesome. trying to figure out how to work that in this entire time. Yeah, I know. Uh, you can tell he was like, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. God. He's like the Ricky Gervais thing where he clasps his, he interlaces his two fingers. He's like, mm, there you go, baby. Got that. Uh, one thing is, uh, I guess, mild spoilers for the Superman and Lois show on the CW, but I like the guy they have on there who, uh, I don't know, Pataya, are you watching that show? Are you yeah, like, that's I, what I was, I was, I wanted to mention trying, something too, I'm but trying I, to, I'm trying to, uh, let me get a little further. Uh, well, yeah. you can say whatever you want, but, uh, no, don't no. Sp- I will say no more before. Spoiling. Yeah, don't say any more because it is a spoiler, and uh, it, we'll it's kind of like very, very CW way to do it. Like, yep, that makes sense. I said is, too much already. So yeah. I'm, I said too much. Like, like, uh, yeah, I'm talking. Show's uh, over. Uh, yeah, no, no, show's <laughs> not over. Damn it. I mean, anyway, um, um, we, airs the night of this recording. It, it airs season, tonight. Oh, okay. The new season, the new season premiere, I believe, with Gotham Knights. Anyway. Okay. Uh, well, so, I, I will try to catch up right now. I'm trying to get like I was going to tell the audience here. We will be speaking about because last week we talked about uh, Star Trek Discovery and how much it sucks balls. Um, <laughs> and No H made a remark that caught my attention because I have to listen to these things like three or four times when yeah. I'm editing them. But I, I kept hearing is all Orville. If I want to see real Trek, I'll watch Orville. And I'd always thought that that was a show that was just kind of like a you know, it's just a goofy show. And so uh, I thought it was a comedy, like kind of like uh, another version of uh, Galaxy Quest. So I never really paid it any attention. When he said that, I was like, well, I have it on Disney Plus. I'll go check it out. And I did. And oh, my God, that show is more Trek than Trek. I don't know why they didn't see that show and go, you know what? To hell with Kurtzman. We need to give it to Seth MacFarlane. As weird as his politics are. As, as bad as his politics are, he is still doing a better Trek than Kurtzman yeah. could ever do with as much money as he's gotten. I I just do not understand how Orville is the new Trek, but we're going to talk about that in a future episode. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do it. We've talked about doing it as a season by season or an episode by episode. I'm more f- a fan of episode by episode, but I think my co-hosts are a fan of talking about it season per season. So. Uh, as, uh, I love the Orville, so I'll talk about the Orville any day. And I was in the same boat. Like, I don't want to get too deep into it, but it was advertised so horribly. Yes. It's 
it run, it, it's there's a fine line between homage and parody, and it manages to be an homage where they can do things where it's like, yeah, that's pretty much how it was on TNG, and it's yes. great. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, uh, it is astonishing to watch. I've never seen uh, since TNG. I've not seen anything that captures that feeling like yeah. Orville. It um, it, I started watching again when she said you started watching it because I only watched the first two episodes and I liked it and we I just I fell off and so I'm rewatching it again and it really does have that that TNG feel. But one thing I do want to spoil is when I was watching it, I forgot something. Um, I don't think I've ever mentioned to y'all, but uh, Doctor Finn in there, who's played by uh, Penny Johnson Gerald, I think her name. Um, she is friends with Brooks cousins husband who's like he's like a millionaire and like she's come over to the house and stuff and I, she's trying to give me an autograph because i i like her from 24 and so if you really think about it you know she was on 24 with keeper sutherland who is in flatliners with kevin bacon so that makes me closer to six degrees <laughs> kevin bacon than any of y'all so and what does that make us just saying dude bods <laughs> used to be the most like we always would play the seven degrees of separation for kevin bacon boz was the champion i don't know how game. i did it he like, did would, it, it every I, time he could bring it back to Kevin Bacon. It didn't matter how obscure this person was. I don't know that his memory is good enough anymore to do that. I don't think so. Yeah, but I, at I the think time, he it. was like the human IMDb. You would say, oh, you would name whoever. I don't care who it was. He would always bring it back. It was a, it was his magical power. Yeah. Like it, it, his superpower. I mean, it was so crazy. Yeah. I don't, there I, was a point where the government wanted me to work for him. <laughs> For this like, one specific like reason, a, there's like a bomb interest. or something that says, "Yeah, it, it's not like a time. It doesn't have exactly like a circuitry. It's just a bunch of like like ch- uh, chits in there that you have to move to where they all connect to Kevin Bacon." <laughs> yeah, and, Bod's and I'm like, "Get out of the way, bomb squad! I got this one." <laughs> and not only did Bod's name these people, he probably could tell you what they were wearing in the movie or yeah, show. I was, probably, I was really good at that. That sometimes yeah, that's what. Was. Was don't get old, that. kids. You, you, you're, yeah, your okay. memory is not as good as it used to be. Don't get middle-aged. Um, don't get, don't middle-aged. get middle-aged. Uh, but I will say that, you know, speaking of Michael Dorn and this is Star Trek and the Orville, um, it's fun to see uh, actors from Star Trek lore appear every now and again, you know? Yeah. So, and, and yeah, so uh, Orville really captures the spirit of Star Trek. Meanwhile, the new era is all about trying to be like other things instead of star trek which yeah is not entirely a, the newest thing yeah. it's just man it's just it's, it's just the most it. depressing thing when you're looking for star trek i don't it go to a coffee I'm, shop looking for tea and so yeah. you don't do that to me when i go looking for trek and, and kind of started in the as much as so i love first contact like most trek fans but it kind of started the doing the action trek which Trek has always had action, but this is more like action movie Trek, and mm-hmm. which loved First Contact, but and but then they, in Insurrection was the follow up, and that became like just an extra long episode, and that wasn't well received. Then uh, Nemesis or whatever came on. I love Nemesis. I agree with every criticism. If you tell me it's horrible for this reason, I'll say I agree with you, and I still love that movie. So I I don't know. I have a brain injury or something where I'm like. <laughs> Yes, all there's so many stupid things in that movie that damaged Trek, but I love it. I don't know why, but it's because we love Trek, dude. You forgive a lot of stuff so. if you're a star, if you're Star Trek yeah. first and then something else next, you'll forgive it. Yes, I think that's why. I think it's just enjoying seeing the cast and the characters and and yeah. modern Trek can learn a lot from the Orville. Yeah, I, I pointed this out to, to y'all the other day, but I don't know if I if I texting it is, is is the same as like saying like describing it but like when an episode of the orville ends it's like how it, it's it's playing the music and it still shows like you know it says like you know some of the credits on the screen but it doesn't like cut to black immediately like it shows like the scene kind of play out a little bit and the music's mm-hmm. kind of or they back like, away from the ship or something yeah 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 and i was like and i was like that's tng right there yeah yeah and, and that's it's how every episode ended and the story to talk more, about it so Go ahead. The Let stories are more um, thought provoking. I won't go into exactly. any stories. Uh, you know, yeah. I haven't finished it, but um, I always liken Star Trek to a cousin to the Twilight Zone. You take an interesting exactly, yeah. and you just mm-hmm. explore it. And yeah. the Orville does that. So 
Yeah. Thanks. So again, this will become a, uh, I want it to become a feature of the channel. I, like I said, I don't know how you guys, Bod says he's more apt to talk about a whole season. I almost, there, there are some channels out there that it's not really a feature. I mean, it is a feature of their channel, but it's not the focus of the channel. They still make it a part. Like uh, Razor Fist has Depths of DS9 where he goes and he <laughs> talks about every individual episode. And I kind of would like to do that with us. But like I said, if you guys aren't into it, we can talk about season to season. And we'll add um, that out as we go. We'll let our two organic fans vote. Yeah. If uh, or, Toshi Baby or uh, the, what's the <laughs> other guy? Manny. Uh, I don't remember the other name. Uh, Manny. Triforce. Triforce Manny. Triforce Manny. If you guys would just tell us. Or even our fans that we had to tell, hey, we have a show. Tell us what yeah. you want to hear. <laughs> Put that in the comments because, God, I would love for somebody to say something in our comments because nobody says anything. Do we? How about if they have difference of opinions? Can we get them to fight each other? possibly do we very, have that kind of we'll power do as, we'll do it trek style we'll put them in like uh we'll put them against each other in that with that song yep so we'll do time when i remembered what that episode was but man don't uh, don't get old that's the main lesson yeah don't get old <laughs> that should be like the subheader in us the middle-aged mutant show don't get old kids <laughs> but don't get old. get stuff that is that you want that is beloved <laughs> you can't remember the name of Save your life. <laughs> Do you want a show about vaguely remembered topics <laughs> through rose-colored glasses? Yes. Only- it's part. not. It's Did not rose-colored right glasses. Place. It's it's cataracts. My cataracts are getting real <laughs> bad these days. But let's move on to the next topic. Uh, this is a new comics uh, thing. The Joker finally gets a bat costume, and Good it's really him. nothing more than that. <laughs> No, it's I I think that I don't know who sent me this article. Um, I believe it was well, who was it? Was, it was me. Okay, so it was, it was, you sent me. Absolutely nothing happens here. He just basically no. tells him, "Hey," uh, but he goes and goes. Oh, I got a bat suit now because this. I, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with this. This is the Batman Deadly Duo story, and it's done no. by it's written and it's illustrated and inked man he's a busy guy by mark yeah. silvestri wow. and it is honestly to me for my money this is one of the better dc books from former uh image uh writers and, and artists that i have read recently uh i will tell you again i will reiterate the spawn batman crossover was not good mm-hmm. not good uh mm-hmm. todd mcfairlane can't write himself out of a box he's very terrible uh, but this one is actually pretty good. It's it it follows Batman, uh, who is um attacked, or actually I think it's a I think it's a he he shows up to a, a crime scene where Harvey Bullock basically is telling him, Hey, this guy's head got ripped off. We can't find it. There's pieces of him everywhere, and we don't know who did this. And it turns out that there's these these joker like creatures that uh kind of they kind of remind me of going back to Guillermo del Toro. They kind of remind me of like the vampires, like little creepy vampires that were in that movie, the second blade where they uh, mm-hmm. like crack addicts where they had to have gut blood constantly or they died. Yeah. Um, that's what these Joker like creatures remind me of. And they basically are tearing the heads off of people and absconding with them. And Batman's trying to figure out why this is occurring. And as he does this, as he's doing his investigation, Joker shows up. And Batman thinks that he's that he's the one behind it. He's like, "You're coming with me. I'm, you know, you gotta, you gotta, uh, I gotta question you." He's like, "Hey, I've got nothing to do with this man. I'm actually uh, Harley Quinn is missing too, and I'm just, you know, we, we need to figure this out because I'm getting blamed for this." And so they go on, uh, well, kind of adventures because most of the time, Batman keeps uh Joker kind of like <laughs> he keeps him in like uh almost like a a, a state of. Because he he ends up having to take him to the Bat Cave, and he basically puts a a leather gimp mask on his face with two zippers for <laughs> eyeballs and a zipper for the mouth, and then he puts he puts like Dancing Queen on, uh, he puts some headphones on with like Dancing Queen playing in the background, <laughs> so that the Joker has no idea what's going on there, and Dick and uh, Alfred help him, uh, to do all this, and um, it's just about their this them trying to figure out who is behind all this. And it uh, it turns out uh, the the they just on this issue they actually reveal who the person is who's who's doing all this, 
And it was pretty, I mean, it was a pretty good reveal. And I got to say, that like. The first canonical appearance of, of uh, ABBA. Has they has Abba ever appeared in the DC universe before? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Does the, and I wondered whenever I read that, I was like, does DC have the rights to that movie? Because it seems like now that DC and Marvel that they have the rights to anything, they're going to throw them in. They're yeah. going to throw them in their movies. So uh, know, that maybe. sounds like that. See, this is a good example of how the what I'm assuming is non-canon. Is yeah, fun. I believe this is Black Label. Yeah, Black exactly. Label another example of like stories can just be good they don't have to be a crossover you can just have its own yeah. little thing. and it's kind of refreshing because i the current batman series the actual like main run man i can't be bothered to read yeah, that the chip sadarsky thing i just and this is starting back from like I, this is like almost like a year, at least a year's worth of comics maybe a year year and a half right it's fell off of reading these things and but you have this little other thing and it becomes really fun it's like hey like hey, i would any, actually i agree with you, you know i yeah, agree with you so. anytime you have like if you just make a comic fun this one has a bit darker tone the other day we were talking about the mark wade run um and i have a hard time not spitting every time i say that name so sorry if i pause whenever but um mark wade <laughs> uh mark wade's run and how that was such a fun throwback well this one's more of like this one has uh more of a tone i would say of like early image and uh kind of 90s 90s dc i think mark sylvester kind of never got out of that because he remember he went on to do cyber force and then he went on to do the darkness and uh it just it kind of has that Who did same shadow tone. hawk shadow hawk that was uh jim valentino okay I remember you guys were super into him because he was like breaking yeah. people's backs and stuff. He was but kind yeah, of that, like, that, you know, <laughs> Batman, Wolverine kind of crossover. Yeah, I he guess. did give me the costume. What like is Wolverine. the name yeah. of that animal ear uh, design that you see in Wolverine's mask? And it appears sometimes you'll see in other people like a shadow hawk. And yeah, like, Whoever, oh, whoever is the first person to draw Wolverine, I should know that. I'm forgetting, but isn't the, it uh, Busk- Busema? Uh, like his uh, hair, like uh, the mask. Yeah, wasn't it? Was it Dave Cockrum or something? Oh, like yeah, that? that does sound that does sound familiar. Yeah, my nerd credit. Well, this is you know the good thing about getting older is you don't really worry about losing your nerd cred. You just worry about losing your mind. It's a, yeah. it's a point. <laughs> well, you, you can always point excuse. to like, I have a bad memory because I'm old. You know, that, that's always yeah. like, get out of I have an excuse why I can't answer this trivia question that will only impress other nerds. It's so... <laughs> I am old. Like, yeah. So that's my excuse. But anyway, like whoever first came up with that should have done some type of patent or copyright or yeah. something. Because, man, everybody, that, started using everybody it. borrowed from it. Um, uh, I'm actually looking up here. This is the this is the closest thing I've ever seen to it before uh the 20th Century Fox um X-Men movies. This was the closest thing I'd ever seen to the Wolverine um haircut. This guy right here. What was that from? This is from a movie called Mom and Dad Save the World. Uh <laughs> it, it, it was a movie with uh who was Oh, Jason Ritter. Uh, Jason, was it? Was that Jason John Ritter, Jason Ritter, was that? It no, I was, think it's, no, that was another. You're thinking, one. You're of, thinking stay tuned. of changing. Stay tuned, exactly. It was Jeffrey yeah. Jones, Terry Gar, and John Levitz, and then uh, uh, Wallace Shawn, which I I love this guy. He's so fun. Eric Idle can suck a big, you know, whatever, because um, <laughs> he's such a retard liberal. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, this guy looks like he's out of Nickelback. But anyways, um, yeah, this movie was about uh, this lady named Marge. And her husband, um, who's I think is a wasn't he convicted of pedophilia? Yeah, I think <laughs> uh, so. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jones, who are going oh. on a tr- trip without their children, and they get abducted by John Lovett, Lovitz. Uh, he lives on this other planet called uh, Spango, I want to say, or Mango. I can't. I think it's Spango. And he uses a uh, what is it called? He uses a uh, magnetic ray to suck them through the universe to his planet because he wants to marry um, Dick Nelson's wife, Marge Nelson. 
and that's just their adventures on that planet and it's it's so funny i i this is a guilty pleasure I, of mine this movie i vaguely remember it anyways but like i said nothing really of this whole this art the, the, what this article kind of the article about this thing kind of highlighted to me is that cbr or uh, was it bleeding cool i don't remember i think it was actually cbr have absolutely nothing to talk about right now because <laughs> i was like this he goes oh i got a bat suit and you're like Batman was like, "Yeah, go put on that backpack over there, and let's go find your girlfriend." That was it. That was literally that was it. it. the The costume didn't do anything really cool, nothing at all. And this Batman's yeah, costume does a couple of cool things, but not not the Joker so far. And that's not really the first time he gets a Batman costume. There's there's been times where he's he's put on the Batman costume and did it up, you know, his style and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. You know, so not not really groundbreaking news there. Yeah, no. So. so. So I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> this is my fault. No, I'm just saying, CBR, it's obvious you have nothing to talk about. If this is stuff you're putting up on the website, nothing really happened here. So What does that say about us? <laughs> well, we're just, we, we, hey, I've already covered uh, a Game Rant having a really crappy opinion, and now uh, CBR having no news to speak of. They just, <laughs> hey, guys, look, this is, this is Joker's got a costume. And I'm like, yeah, it's, that's that's about the end of that story. That's so. um, <laughs> that's uh, I, I switched to my earpods, so I have no idea if you can hear me. No, we can hear you. Okay, it sounds good. Uh, okay, uh, that's just another um, uh, that's just getting a reaction out of Click non-comic me. book readers. That's just mm-hmm. it's just stirring yeah. up. And if you read the comics, you know it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Really, really nothing of a burger. What I would say the real story more buff it, than we thought it was. Yeah. What I would say is probably the real that. story here is that Mark Silvestri should be allowed to do more comic books. Todd McFarlane should not. Just stick to making toys. Hot take. Yeah. Make yeah. toys, don't make That's comics, true. bro. You're pretty terrible. Anyways, <laughs> now let's move on to the last section of this. Uh the, we're calling it back issues. I won't spend a ton of time on this, but I want to talk about a comic that I if you can get a hold of this comic, I honestly had to pay a little bit more for it than a uh, cover price. Uh, the Punisher War Zone uh, trade have paperback. You have it. So no, the Punisher War Zone, this is issues one comic. through six that I picked up uh, off of eBay because I had to look for it. Because for some reason, Marvel will not reprint this. And that's my other motivation for making this. Marvel, please, for the love of God, make an omnibus of the Chuck Dixon War Zone, uh, Punisher War Zone. Is that Isn't, thank you. because they would have to pay him some type of residual or something? Oh, I have no clue. I doubt that, but I have no clue. <laughs> Probably not, but you know. But so I, was, I have the actual first issue of this, and what I remember the most is like it had the bullet holes in it. Like you open it up, and it was like yeah, yeah cut yeah, out yeah, bullet it was, holes. It was die cut. Stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, true. cool I have stuff. That one as well, it's pretty awesome. But um, yeah, this book uh follows uh follows a story where. Uh, Frank Castle has like a exchange with a uh, informant that ends up with him killing the informant, and it kind of like upsets it upsets uh, Micro, and uh, uh, Micro uh, decides that hey, you're you're being a dick. I'm just gonna leave, and then Frank ends up following him and finds out that he's uh, talking to a uh, a shrink, and he says, hey, you better not be telling the shrink about anything about me, and he's like, oh uh, yeah, well then tell with you, I'm leaving, and then. You never see Micro for the rest of this particular six issue series. Six issue series, and so it's basically Frank on his own, and uh, the story it, it kind of jumps from here to here, from here to there. But it also involves this character, and his name is Shotgun. And oh he, yeah, uh, Shotgun mm-hmm. is a uh, like a PM. Uh, he's a private military uh, contractor who is whenever we first meet him, he's in Colombia and he's taken out like this banana Republic basically for the United States. And he's, he's heading back to the States and they give him a job. They basically tell him, Hey, you're going to be taking out this crime family known as the Carbones. And uh, the Carbones are, uh, are a family that's basically trying to fill the void left by the, the, the lack of a kingpin. And I'm not sure of what the the story was before this, like how the kingpin actually it was out of the picture. He might have been in jail or something like that. I don't. I'm not. I'm not aware. Um, but that's what the Carbonis are trying to do. And this is 
this is a really cool book because what basically happens is the Punisher follows after after Micro's gone, he loses all that. He loses all the background checks, he loses all the all the research, all that stuff. So he kind of has to do things on his own, and he hasn't had to do this, I guess, in a while. He's relied so heavily on Micro that he goes on and he um he goes on and he starts making his own like hits. And one of them is he decides that uh he he gets a from one of his informants that there is a um uh, a, a job that's going to go down by some freelancers. These are guys that work for the Carbones as a, um, uh, and they're, and they're doing some moonlighting and they're going to hit a triad bank, uh, not a bank is a triad casino and, and knock it over so they can get the money and then just take off with it. Uh, but, and since the Punisher knows that he shows up and he just like slays all these dudes and he, uh, makes off with one of the guys. And this is where you get that really cool scene from the, uh, Tom Jane, Punisher oh, yeah. uh, movie the where popsicle. he he pop, oh, the yeah, popsicle yeah. torture scene where he burns the steak Ooh, and yeah. he sticks <laughs> the popsicle on the back and the name of this guy is Mickey Fondozi. Uh anyways, so Mickey um basically says, "I'll tell you whatever you want." He ends up working with the Punisher and and he gets the Punisher actually uh that helps him infiltrate the Carbone family as a guy named Johnny Tower. Hmm. And as Johnny Tower, he basically uses this as as a way to go and kill mobsters using a mobster's army. So he goes and he takes out other mob families and uh, he, he uh, just goes on like a, a he takes them out using their their assets, taking out other mobsters assets. And then he, he'll end up even killing some of these other guys just to go. Well, they're on my list, too. So it's, it's pretty cool. I, I, I haven't read anything like this. Other than like kind of like the movie, this I think this one. If you're gonna if you're gonna ask me, I would think me think that this is where they got most of the inspiration for the Tom Jane Punisher because it's it ends up being where he he goes and he uh he 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 takes out this family from within. He even like gets hit on by the daughter and he ends up sleeping with her and stuff. But he, he what he really does is he orchestrates this um this uh uh basically conflict between the the head boss which is named julius carboni and his brother sal and what he does is like the punisher goes out one evening as the punisher not johnny and he he takes out one of their um uh, bookies and he steals all the money and then he pins it on sal uh carboni and then sal uh the sal gets uh or uh, sorry uh julius tells johnny uh, johnny um tower and mickey to go and basically take him out because He's trying to take over my territory, even though he's my brother, you should go kill him. And so they basically take him out into the middle of nowhere and they're going to shoot him, but he gets away and he ends up falling underneath this ice, uh, icy, uh, uh, lake. And they just count him off as dead. And they, they take a couple photos and they go and they show it to the brother and he's like, Oh yeah, thank good work boys. And they, they move on, but it doesn't like go as well for him after that, because there's this informant that basically, uh, in prison that finds out that, the Johnny Walker, uh, sorry, Johnny Tower is actually the Punisher, and then Frank gets ambushed, and he, he, the the Carbonis put a hit out on him, but he gets away, and then he heads off to to find them. They they've taken off to this island where um they're making a deal with these European uh the European mob, and then just absolute hell breaks loose, and the Punisher just does what he does. Him, uh, Mikey, and um, Shotgun all go there to basically just like kill all these people and i gotta say for my money this is one of the better punishers that i've read and also for my money i I think that john romita jr was perhaps one of the best artists that the punisher ever had uh suck it steve dylan i don't care if you're dead Uh, (laughs) john romita jr to me is the definitive punisher artist and i just think all around this book is fun and it's it's uh it's beautifully drawn and I, i just like the classic 90s punisher uh like shenanigans uh versus the, the i do odds. i do like me said mike zach but i don't know who man the definitive artist man that's a that's a tough one because there's been I'm a lot gonna, of i'm luck. just gonna say tim bradstreet yeah but he didn't i do would interiors. say he just did covers yeah but i that's say just, for covers he even yes. took pictures he took pictures and he put stuff all on top of them but I will yeah. say, as far as like pure artistry goes, it's just a different kind of art. 
if you're talking about actually hand drawn, uh, well, I mean, no, not Bradstreet, but what he did do was amazing. But uh, hand drawn, man, there's been a lot of good ones. I'd have to mull that over as who I think is the best. But um, I was saying the one thing I remember about Shotgun is he never got to drive. Yeah, I don't remember him. Dri- well, he flew a plane in this one. Well, he never got. Oh, to be oh in the God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I just got that joke. Holy crap. <laughs> it was a good joke. I'm very slow. Very slow up in the uptake of that one. <laughs> He's like, come on, Frank. I want to drive. Or else deal. I, I don't drive. I Your jokes are so day. subtle, no age. I've gotten most of them today. That one got me. I like, oh, you flew a plane in <laughs> well, this one. You, you and said earlier that you, that a, a lot of it was like based, like the Tom J movie was based on this. I think it's kind of an amalgam of this and Welcome Back, Frank. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. I yeah, believe it is. There was the um, apartment people. Yeah, there. they were in that Welcome Back, Frank, Back and the Russian... Day. Was yeah. there any like Definitely was Nash. there any like getting mobsters to kill mobsters in the in the in the uh, Steve Dillon and Garth Oh, because this one was all yeah. about conniving a way to get this mobster to kill this mobster from within. I know that didn't happen in the movie, uh, oh, but in this did. one, he, well, like he remember, he remember takes he, pictures he, of his friend who's like the gay guy. Yeah, he, he framed him to yeah, and he got him to kill. He him. frames his wife and all that stuff. That's what yeah. this one does. This one yeah, has more of like the true. Punisher being very like cunning and conniving and figure he does eventually get caught and it's not his fault uh it's actually kind of more um it's kind of more uh shotgun's fault because shotgun is the one that goes to the prison and talks uh to one of the inmates about castle and then there's a uh there's a uh uh was it a guard that overhears them and then he relays that information for for money to the carbones and that's how punisher gets found out and so yeah I gotta say, if you want a good Punisher book, it is a little hard to find. But these issues one through six, they're uh, fantastic. I believe you can get them on Amazon digitally, and you can still get the. If you go to a decent comic book shop that has some uh, good back issues, you should be able to find this as well. You know, I always, yeah. I always figure like if you want an honest to goodness good Punisher live action series, it should probably be more like on HBO or something. Yeah, I mean, he would be played by Pedro Pascal, but I really oh. think <laughs> Punisher. Punisher Pascal, Punisher Pedro. Uh, uh, really, pun- that'd be punishment was, for me, to be honest. <laughs> um, the Last of Us is you know, an entirely different conversation, but I, um, but I, I really think like, or maybe like even Showtime or something. I mean, I, I, I don't know, but that seems more interesting than the um, oh the the Punisher Warzone movie that came out in like God uh, two thousand eight, I think. Yeah, which was just yeah. sort of a shoot 'em up. It was just mindless. And, yeah, and uh, I really it. think yeah, it's true. Yeah. I, I mean, but I just uh, I remember thinking like, man, the Punisher is just way smarter. Not just the Punisher himself, but just the storytelling is typically ways. Depending on the comic you read, but it's typically mm-hmm. there's a lot going on, like in the issues you're describing here. You know, there's layers upon layers layers to this man yeah. layers well what's yeah. funny is like you know you mentioned pedro pascal as as punisher i was gonna make the joke chris pratt but yeah. chris pratt was yeah. pretty much the punisher in terminal list so well, didn't cool. watch that he, he's very he's very punisher-esque in what that. i'll do is I'll, I'll take a piece of paper a white paper and i'll cut out a skull and every time he's on screen i'll just hold that up where his t-shirt is and just there you go. like I, wish, wish that's the thing. We all had to do that for the Dolph Lundgren movie, so you know. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He had but, his skull with the little on the handle of his knife. On the handle of his knife, that was, that was that's it. True. That that's was true. It. That remember, was it. Remember, like it. I, I was a kid when I saw that, and I remember just being like, every house he goes into explodes, and he doesn't die. I was just like so fascinated <laughs> by that. Yeah, he's like they see him, they're all, oh, there's the Punisher. Boom, the house was up. I was Boom. like, how did he exactly make that? It was like a cutout of him. He's like, ha, 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 and then runs out the back door. I just never yeah. understood how that worked because he just it would you blow know, the, up and he'd be standing there. The Dolph Lundgren yeah. is a fun movie. It's just maddening that he doesn't have a skull. That's it. I know. Mm-hmm. Like, like the I, easiest costume you can do, and you don't do I remember it. In, Plus two, he's naked in the first part. He's like, oh god, <laughs> I'm right. naked. Yeah, that was, that was where... <laughs> I'm in the sewer and in naked. School, I'm they let's do so like many a little... infections. 
<laughs> like in art class, they let us do a little carving project. I carved a little knife handle for that. The Punisher oh, I thing. Gonna I was you're like, gonna carve, I carved a naked Dolph Lundgren. I was like, that's that's. I carved a naked project. Dolph Lundgren sitting in the sewer. <laughs> sitting in the sewer. <laughs> that's what he does. But that's the anyways. crossover we needed. We needed the uh, we needed the turtles to just walk by. I'm like, okay, you got oh, that. No, oh no, no. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna yeah. leave yeah. alone. Go the other way. <laughs> Shh, shut up. Don't don't say anything. Like, but anyways, yeah. that's all I got for this week, guys. Uh, I hope that everybody has had fun on this episode of the Middle Aged Mutants. Um, I hope you guys had fun. Bods and Noich, you know. I, I did, I really and I actually, I'm actually here for the entire show. I know. I, I, I mean, I'm I, pleased. This means I actually I, did a good job on the agenda this time, and I got it timed just about right. I mean, I have to hop off like almost immediately, but yeah, I'm, okay. I'm here. Well, again, so, yeah. <laughs> if you like this, go ahead and like it. If you didn't, thumbs down it, whatever you want to do. Subscribe if you feel like it uh, for more of this stuff. And we'll see you guys again on the Middle-Aged Mutant Show. This is Ty Boz and Noe signing off. <laughs>